Good morning. Bless you. Good morning, Athena. I'm struggling in the boys' department. <laughs> I'm Renee. Good morning, good morning. Make sure you guys are sharing the live out. I'm going to have Carrie Koss on here. We're going to talk about manifesting today. It'll be a really good discussion. <clears throat> good morning, Coralie. Let's share this out. Maybe. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Good. Okay, let me turn my. Oh, we are so matching. Let me see. Oh, no way. Are we? We are matching. Oh, we are. <laughs> This wasn't even intended. Look at us. We're matching. How are you doing, my friend? How are you? I sound better oh, yeah. than I did yesterday. Yesterday. You sound a little schmexy. You sound schmexy. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Hi. Oh my God. Good morning, folks. I'm going to start off sharing this out, Fran, yeah, as you do, you know. I know. How, it's so I good do. to be with you. It's so good to be with you. I'm really excited to, no, you know, get our intentions out there for the new year, Fran. This is what we're doing. I'm excited. Doing it. Yes. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, friends. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. Sharon, Sharon. I think, isn't there all, isn't there a way that you can share ev to everybody? I always feel like there must be some inside thing that I don't know about where you can share to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> That'd be so efficient. It only makes me share to like 15. Right, exactly. But they're like, we don't want you to overwhelm the system. So there you go. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yeah. So share, share, share with a lot of things. Yes, very excited to be with you, my girly. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll do a few more of these. Yes. So now tell us what happened in your own words. What happened to your voice, friend? Yeah, so, I didn't feel I didn't get filled with this. No, I just started sneezing on Friday because you know my last day of work <clears throat> was Thursday. Started sneezing on Friday. I'm like, I don't know about this. And then Saturday, my throat started hurting. And by yesterday, I mean, like, it's just been a gradual decline ever since. <clears throat> I don't, the thing is, it's all contained. It's all contained right here. It's not anywhere else. So I, I feel yeah. like I've just got like a sinus infection. Probably started out as a little cold virus thing. And then, but this happens when I, when I get a sinus infection, I will lose my voice. Like it'll get in my throat and I'll lose my voice. So at least once a year, I lose my voice. Okay. But, yeah. <clears throat> right, right at the end of the year, right. right at the, as you're, as you're going through your busy season, exactly. right? Exactly. Usually I lose it closer to January, not normally around the holidays, but here right. we are. And here we are drinking that hot tea. Mm -hmm. Going in, you know what I mean. I do. I do. So how you been? Yes. Are you ready for the holidays? I've been doing great. I've been doing so good, and 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 you know, as you know, that this is my first season. Um, I retired from hair, as you know, and so it's yeah. my first season of not doing hair in December. That would be like you not doing Nutcracker during. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset about it. Like, <laughs> I. You realize how much it takes out of you, right? 
It does. And you're also trying to do Christmas or holidays with your family or whatever. Good morning, Rose. Good morning, Janelle. Um, and so for me, it's been so nice not having that extra burnout. And so, um, but I think like you, I, and I want to hear about, because weren't you at Camp Chesterfield this weekend? Or were you doing readings? Like, was it this weekend? <laughs> when did online. you do So Sunday night, like once a month, they'll have an online psychic fair and um, they'll, people will book for 10 minute slots and it's so well organized. Like there's a host that like pairs everybody up like with who they're supposed to be with, who they signed up with. And so I usually sign up for a two hour time slot. So I'll do eight readings in a couple hours. And um, yeah, I mean, and it was crazy because I could feel my voice declining. Okay. Through that two hours, I get yeah. done, I go upstairs and my husband was like, how'd it go? And I went, Oh God! I had nothing. So the spirit had you on. You were you were on stage. Hi, Laura. You were on stage. You were doing your thing, and as soon as you're off, like, oh. that's it. Yep. Yeah, God. Yep. Yeah, because I was actually going to go. Goodness. I was gonna. I was thinking about. Okay, since I'm in my zone, I'll go on and do live readings. I was going to do some live readings because again, I don't feel bad. I sound terrible. Right. You know. But you're your normal high energy Lorinda self besides this, right? Besides this. Besides this. <laughs> oh, friend. Yeah, the floating head. Yes, I, I do. Dance. Dance. And I am a dancer as well. Yeah, I still professionally tap dance. She's incredible. She is incredible. I mean, all the things, Lorinda. Just amazing. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad. I'm, and it's nice to really be with you. And of course, always because you're a, my sweet friend. And then also to spend time in the space together. So, oh, um, Lorenda, can I ask you now? Tell everybody because then we have 50 people in here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm so. Tell me about what you are up to right now in your spiritual mentorship business space. I would love to hear about it because maybe some of my people don't know that. And yeah. I would love everybody to just, if you could just kind of frame it for everybody, if you don't mind. So right now I'm just in that mode where it's, it's the holiday season, but I'm gearing up for January, February. Um, so of course I do one-on-one -on -one readings, but I've got on the docket and I need to add one more class. I've got on the docket for February. I'm bringing back my, my spirit guides 101 class. Um, my tarot 101, that's the one I have to put on the schedule and my learning and learning the language of your guides <clears throat> for people who are trying to learn how to connect to their guides. And once you connect to them energetically, how do we talk to them? How do we establish communication you know because yes. it's it's one thing it, it we always self-doubt when we get signs right so basically i just teach you how to trust and how to know how to hone in on the signs for those for those loved ones on the other side it doesn't have to be spirit guides it can be just loved ones and then i do one-on-one -on -one mentoring which that seems to be taking up a lot more time than even just readings right now like i've got a lot of people that are just um trying to grow and expand. They're not trying to be professional mediums always. I have a few that are, but then yeah. I've got some are just like, I just want to understand more. I want to connect more. I want to, I know I've got something. I just want to hone in on it. Um, and, and then I'm planning. Thank you, Rose. <clears throat> I'm planning. Um, I'm working with some people across the country and my mentor of planning a tour to do live yes. demonstration mediumship. So I don't know what that looks like yet, but we're manifesting, which is what we're talking about. We're manifesting, today. and you know you have a place in Oregon, and I'm here oh, for you, no. or Vancouver, Washington. So you can do Portland or Vancouver, Washington. So, um, so now, now you also, my friend, have oh, yes. some amazing stuff coming up. Please, yes. you, now, that you're, now that you're not doing hair, you're like, I got all kinds of time. Oh, I think I'm all creative school. It's crazy. I, I wake up going, what do I have to be? I go, oh, I have four hours to work on stuff. 
It's great. Well, as you know, my friend, so um, I, have, mm -hmm. I have been trying to organize my spaces as a mentor and as a, a teacher and mm -hmm. as a professional, you know, with doing what we do, a uh, holding space. Oh, thanks, Nikki. That's so sweet. Thank you. Well, Lorinda and I are matching today. We, we, went, we didn't even get this. This is us with our cream sweaters on. Um, so I, being the Libra, I am needing balance. I, my guides were like, okay, you need to, they keep showing me a picture of a house. So you, because I like you, I work with people from, I call it soup to nuts. So from when they're getting mm -hmm. started, in, am I hearing spirit to when they want to be professional? So I'm doing everything. And then people in between who just want to, like you're saying, want to just develop, delve in and grow and just yeah. interpret, right? And just to have it. So I'm kind of, I'm building a school um, and community called the Sacred Seer School and Community. And so it's, um, it's really launching, I want to say end of January. And um, I'm very excited about it. Now, the structure will be, there'll be, you know, definitely if you're just interested in opening up to your psychic abilities um, and you want to start that journey, part of the membership, you'll be able to have an intro class for that and places to practice with a circle as well as mediumship. Yay. Um, and then the other thing is a lot of people like you want to move into maybe doing it professionally so they can mentor with me in that. But then I'm also like you. I am a student of all things in the occult and mysticism and mystical. So I'm a, like kind of, I take deep dives all the time just in my own growth about these topics. So we're going to have guests <laughs> like Lorinda and other people I know that work with, say, like deities and angels and... Um, they do a variety of things like astrology, Reggie, astrology, human design, um, gene codes. I mean, uh, they're going to be guest mentors. So because I'm a community person, you know me. I'm a community me person. Yeah, I feel I am too. I'm that way, not only in mediumship, but like a tab dance. Exactly. Like, very exactly. So, <laughs> so, that's, so that's, and again, that's why you and I just link together so well because we love we are we like the idea of supporting each other yes. and giving you know our communities more more of everything so that's what really what we're doing and then I have a workshop going on in January which is kind of related to the topic we're talking today is heal your money story yes. so I'll yes. definitely talk about it. so I'm excited lots of things going on I know, so. I know. um yeah the one the only one thing I'm doing that I did not mention is my circles Yes, oh my gosh, your circles and who yeah. some of your students are in here right they now, are. they can attest to it. They are. Brenda's yeah. an amazing mentor. I mean, unreal, like knows how to hold space, knows how to encourage, knows how to explain things. So incredible. She's a teacher. I mean, she's a master teacher. A lot of people who've been in this space have only been doing it a year or something. You have been a teacher for how many years now? Just say well, it. I've, I've been teaching dance, so a teacher, teacher. Yeah. For 36 years 36 years i mean you can't really you can't duplicate right. that and, and i think that and I, you and i've talked about this i think and this is not a uh oh i'm so amazing moment for me but i tell you what what makes me a good teacher is i have a hard time learning and i have to i have to find alternative ways to learn things and understand things so as a teacher i try to explain things in multiple ways that people wow. understand and that that works exactly. for them because not everybody learns the same thank you reggie thank you rose that's so, um so yeah so, the, so like the development circle i do i've got a class tonight and i think there's two two or three spots open still it's the holidays so it didn't sell out but that's okay um yeah uh where it's only 25 dollars and it's a couple hours it never it, i always end up going longer it's never just two hours but <laughs> it is what it is yeah but learning how to tap into that intuition and spirit is one that chooses. Now you, you find this too. You go in and you're like, well, what am I teaching? Like we try to right. follow things, but th that's a mark of a good teacher. And I feel like you're the same way. That's a mark of a good teacher. Someone who can go, well, spirit, what are we doing? And I may have a list of things that I think I'm going to teach that day. <laughs> Spirit's like, oh, that's cute. You're going to cover that for about 30 seconds and then I'll take that's over. But thanks for the intro. <laughs> I'm glad you warmed them up for me. That yeah. was awesome. I'm the, I'm the warm up act. Yeah, yeah, you're the warm up. You're good at that. You're like, oh, they're coming in. But up, bum. Here we go. Right, right. And then, and then all of a sudden, we're pivoting. And my even my class at this point, they're like, oh, here we go. Here goes. Oh my God. 
It goes down right. to and also that just shows honestly, Lorenda, and I'm gonna really compliment you one more time, is that um being able to know you have all of that acumen exactly. to be able to teach on these topics so you know in in depth but knowing what you're holding space for is spirit and your students development and so you're playing to that you're you're feeding yeah. into you're building that and that's how they are going to learn how to trust themselves is right. because of your modeling you know well, and sometimes we, we as teachers don't know what our students need mm -hmm. right up front yeah. um and so spirit will come in and I'll just be like, I, I, that's part of, I think that's part of this journey between, and we can talk about this in manifesting and intentions also, because when you trust what spirit is giving you, even if it doesn't make sense to you, if you allow it to flow through, it works. Yes. Trusting spirit and trusting, like I trust my guides, I trust, I trust my master teachers, I trust, I just turn it over and I'm like, I'm just literally the one just in, just delivering the, the words here. And I get my ego out of the way. And, and guess what? In the meantime, I learn things. Yes, and you're continuing to learn. That's yes. what it, it is. You're, you're in the humbleness of mm -hmm. spirits continuing to mold you, shape you, develop you as a person. Right. I mean, that, that's, yeah. I feel like that's why you and I get along because you are very much the same way. Like you hold space for your students. You hold space for spirits. You, you lift it. You, you're the same way. You're like, well, I thought I was going to talk about this today, but Spirit said, pivot. And you and I have that same thing. We kind of go, oh. <laughs> hold on. Right. So, <laughs> I trust Spirit more awesome. than I trust humans. I get that. I get that. Oh, Raven's here. Hi, Raven. Hey, um, this is my friend, Lorinda Carr. Oh, my gosh. I love it. You know, the other thing I wanted to also say to you too, because talking about understanding what your students need. So just a little bit, and we're gonna, our topic is gonna be great, exciting today. So uh, in my, I have a year long program that I have students that I work with. Um, and uh, so one of um, the things that I'm not an expert in is platform mediumship. And so uh, Lorenda, when did we start talking about this? In the summer or when was it? I think we started talking about it in the summer and we did it what in September? Our, yes, it feels like I think it was September. Yeah, September. so um, Lorenda mm -hmm. is very, um, um, it's beyond knowledge. She embodies what it be, means to be a medium, but also doing platform work, which she'll explain because some of my students don't know what that is who come into my space. Um, so I actually um, asked Lorenda if she would teach a class for my students on platform mediumship, being able to work in a public space and give readings and um you it was so wonderful first of all to do that you know as your friend but also i was a student in the class myself and um i learned so much and my students just really got so confident and comfortable with that skill set so um you know i i want to thank you for that of course but can you, before we move on to our topic, can, for some people, can you explain the different types of memeship? Because I don't think everybody knows um, about the options that we have to do mediumship. Um, if you, would you mind going into that a, a little bit and explain well, that? So we'll start with like what platform mediumship is. Exactly. So platform mediumship is where I like to say that we engage spirit HIPAA laws. It's because when we're in a public forum like this, you know, um, I'm going to allow spirit to come in, impress me with some things I'm going to feel. And I might, and basically I'm doing readings in a public way, <clears throat> still giving very specific evidence without outing the person, without disclosing too much information in a public forum. So it's a safe space still. Um, and it's usually, and it's, it's message delivery. You get, you get in, you, you ask the, the spirit to, um, you ask the spirit to tell you who it goes to, or the person will claim it, whatever. And it can work both ways. Once the spirit is identified, you deliver the message and you get out. Like yeah. it, it, and that way, many people in a public forum can get readings. And that's how a lot of times I will do my TikTok readings, for instance, as I do, I engage platform mediumship. Um, 
where I'll get hits. And then sometimes we'll do full on readings where I'll pull someone in the box or there'll be an energy exchange where, you know, would you understand this, 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 and this platform mediumship? I don't really ask. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I'm being drawn to you. I see this, 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 and this, the spirit feels like a grandmother energy and, um, and here's the message. Thank you for allowing me to read for you. You get in, get out. But there's a whole set of ethics that goes along with that and being able to still deliver the message ethically, hold space for someone um, and and make that person feel safe, even though they're in a public setting. Um, and that and that takes practice. It takes it takes practice in a safe place with a community that you trust um, and that trusts you like that trust spirit in the good morning, Adam. Um, it is, it's a way of man thanking me. I'm reading. It is. Then it's just, it's message delivery because our job as mediums is to prove the continuity of life. Right. And, and, or, and, and not just from this life forward, but even from past life into this life. And it, it's just, it's a continual, it's continuous, yes. right? And then there's, you know, then there's the mediumship where I might sit down and connect energetically to you in along with spirit and there may be a, a much bigger broader not broader uh more specific energy exchange um where your loved ones multiple loved ones are coming in delivering messages but it's still very everything that i know everything i do and I know everything you do is very evidence-based um yeah. and uh and then you know and then there's there is so yeah your platform mediumship you have your one-on-one -on -one mediumship oh, thank you for joining my team um and then there's also like physical mediumship where there's there, that's a whole other layer of inner when spirit can bring physical things like interact physically you know there's channeling there's trance work there's whew, there's so many different forms of mediumship um oh my, oh my gosh. and healing and ultimately that is what the idea is it's not ever to put on the show yes there is an element of showmanship yeah. that is required if you're going to be working in a public forum. However, it's not about the show. It's about the energy exchange and allowing that person to receive the message to create a space of healing for them and to know that their love what's going on. That's ultimately what mediumship is about. It's not about, oh, look, I can talk to you know, the Schmed people. Yeah, right, right, right. right. That. Absolutely. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing? Tell me, what are your thoughts on on the the different types of mediums? No, everything you said was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love everything you said. <laughs> I know, I love it. And you know, it's like the um, I'd say the one thing I was thinking about is when you do platform, and then also if you do a gallery. So that's maybe I know you've done this before for like ten people, and everyone gets a reading. Can you speak on that a little bit, Lorenda? Because I like people to know. Oh, I have all these options. If I decide to do this professionally, I have all these options. Whichever is right for me to do this. So yeah, yeah, you could do things like that. Whether you work with other people, like other mediums or other like what something I used to do back in my beginning days is I worked with an energy worker. And then someone uh, who like did the energy clearing and then a, a Reiki person who also was working from a psychic point of view where I was definitely the medium, right? right? Yes. So we would do things called sign sessions where we'd have 12, 10 to 12 people come in, they'd pay for a seat and everybody got a reading from all three of us. And so like we would pull cards um, what, and then if there's energy clearing that needed done, they would do energy work. So it was, and it was always, it was very, again, very, quick and very point specific because you're in a public forum exactly you are in um but it wasn't full on reading like at like okay would tell me about this grandmother i feel like it there was some interaction but it was mostly us giving information and and doing the work right and so those are options and there are other people that do that i haven't done i haven't done a zoom one for a long time i haven't done one I, in a while um yeah. But that, that is an option. And I know a number of mediums on here that will have Zoom events like that. They'll do live events where you pay for a seat, basically. And then you get to watch other people's readings. And then you also get a reading yourself. Um, and it's just another way of proving the continuity of life, proving spirits around, proving up and, and creating a space for healing.
So, yeah, that's what, like you say, that's what it's all about is that intention going in with that intention yeah. into the space. Because it is kind of, it, that is the something that, well, this is with most things to do with if you're holding spiritual space, if you're holding and you're literally saying you're representing spirit, <laughs> that's a big job. And I that's feel a like job. <laughs> big job without having to have pressure, you know, but at the same time, how much development we have to do is people in order to make that a sacred space and to be able to make that into a experience that is hi emily that is like you said healing and and we speak of ethics and things like that but it's really like are you leaving the client better off yes. than started and we find people in such you know um traumatic moments right and really hurting and processing things and that is a really I'm, I'm sacred space. I mean, I feel like you have to do a lot of work on yourself throughout that time to be able to do that in a way that's where you are being reverent of the person's process. I'm actually doing next year, I'm going to be doing a certification through the International Coaching Federation on trauma, a trauma coaching certification, because my guides are like, if you're, if you're holding yes. space, and you're doing this, you have to be very trauma informed. I, I feel like intuitively we are. I mean, that's great. But I feel like there's some things that are still probably even in my blinder that I'm not doing well, you know, so I'm, I'm just as always humans, kind of as humans, we're always growing. Yeah, if we're open to it. <laughs> yeah. If we're open to it. Which is really? why we get along because we're like, Oh, spirit just kicked my butt today. Guess what I learned? You know, yeah. I'm right over the coals. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, yeah. I, as a medium, found so much healing through others. I know, isn't that? Yeah. It's so true. I know all of you yes. do that same. All of you have that same heart, which is yeah. so, so beautiful. Well, and that's so important to remember. There, just because you, I always say, just because you can doesn't mean you should. You know, and, and just because we all can connect to spirit, we all have the ability to do that because we are divine light. But, you have to be prepared for what comes with it. It's not always doom and gloom, um, it, but there are, there have been times where I've done readings for people and in order for me to not see, again, spirit HIPAA laws, I don't see their life specifically. What spirit does is relate my life to what they're going through. And sometimes that ugly stuff is what I'm shown. Yes. And if I'm not, if I haven't dealt with that, that can be very triggering. So th the 30 years of, you know, therapy woo, comes in handy. Um, so for you to be doing the certification for trauma response is genius because that not only will help you, but it'll help everybody, you know, everybody that you come in contact with, you're going to be able to allow that to flow through and that's help the, them in, in a safe way, in a safe way. Yeah, that's it. And I think it's all just continual development and nuance, right? And develop. So a couple people are asking a lot of questions about things like that. There's our, there's our, my sweet, dear friend, Keisha, who I have to introduce you to. This yeah, is Keisha, intuitive coach. She's my heart sister and also an incredible space holder, mentor, psychic medium. Um, she, she did another thing like you. She worked with my students on yes. ancestor veneration. And we, you, you know, I want you to meet her. We have, she is, so please, if you're following me, make sure you follow Keisha. Um, Michelle's here. Um, yeah, so but, Lauren, a couple of people are asking about um, development. I'd, uh, related things. And we actually, in this moment, I guess we could answer questions about that. Lorinda and I kind of have a topic, but I'm going to let Lorinda kind of see what, how she feels. Kenzie has quite a few questions. I don't know if you want to address that now, or if you, how you feel, friend. I think I questions. Hold on. Yeah, she's got a couple of things. Hi, Ruthie Ruth. Hello, Hi, everybody. Instead of me going back and trying to adjust my eyes, what was your most yes, pressing love. Do you want me to kind of give you a uh, synopsis yeah i left my gla my reading glasses up. it's okay babe i know i literally i can't even you're better off she's having a lot of sort of experiences um let me just go to the one that i saw one sec everybody thank you for your pressure i'm curious if it's weird i can look at pictures and see specific beings very detailed so it's probably a physical picture i'm imagining um and then being able to see energy connected to that um, can you clarify if that's what you're saying? I want to know if that's what you mean, and then I'm going to have a, we'll answer that. Yes, she said. 
So that Does that is, make sense? How I that, that is to me that is the form of psychism. Would you agree? Like that's a form of connecting energy to like if you're taking a physical object and and you're connecting your higher self, your energy to that energy. Now and if okay, so if you see the person, how are you seeing? It? Is it in your mind's eye? That's where the information has to come in. Um, and and then you address the you, you if you're getting these visions, then you like okay, what Claire is that? Am I hearing it, seeing it, knowing it? How's the information coming in? And is this an actual spirit or is this an image of a spirit? Yeah. Is this an impression of a spirit? And is the spirit communicating with you or is this you understanding and getting information from it? So I think that's important to ask those questions. Um, again, we're, I, I come from the camp of, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, it could be, it could be either, or it could be psychism or it could be a spirit coming through. I feel like probably it, it, they're both okay. By the way, psychism, <laughs> medium. I am not as good at psychism as I am mediumship. To me, I'm, it takes too much work to do psychism. Do you find? Do you agree? Like, I feel like spirit. I can just be like, I'll just sit back. You let this just come on through. I'll just go and see. Excellent. Where are you, doing, takes are you doing your Leo lioness thing of bring me my, uh, bring it to me and yeah. let me share it. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things too, if you ever want to, that definitely, for I would agree, I think that is definitely, it feels like psychism, but it could be a blend. Not to worry about discerning that part of it, but the main thing is if those things are happening to you, just um, validating your experience and understanding that as you're learning and growing up and developing, it can take time to really discern that information. So just enjoy it. The other thing is there's an ancient practice that's been going on for centuries called scrying. And that's literally where you're just looking into a mirror or, um, or any object or crystal ball. Yes. And you're starting to open up the field and seeing what spirits bringing you yeah, yeah candles all those sorts of things that's probably what you're picking up on you're looking at energy you're looking at spirit in some form so good for you how exciting awesome. um, <laughs> good for you how exciting yeah and you know and that's that's where if you depending on how deep you want to go um how deep you want to go with it then you find a mentor. If you're not sure you find a mentor, whether that's me, whether that's Carrie, like whether that's something, there's lots of other mentors out there. So then you, you do your research and see who you vibe with, you know? Um, you and know. you can have several. <laughs> yeah, we, we encourage, we encourage being well-rounded with, with your training and think that that's great because you need different mentors for different things sometimes. Sometimes it'll just be you. So yeah, that's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah. Well, and, and different people. I know I, for me, I, my students are going to come to me for certain things yeah. and, and, and they may ask me a question and I'm going to be like, that is not my wheelhouse, but I know someone who does. And I'm going to be able to, and I think you and I are really good. That's where community, community comes in. Yes, we need community. community. You cannot be on, you cannot be all things to your students, nor should no. you try to be. No. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's just something maybe we need to look into why that is. So, okay. So yes, let's, everybody let's, does. Everybody does. Absolutely. I know like you and I learn from each other every time we have a conversation. All the time. Every all time, time we talk to each other. <laughs> um, and, and, like my, and then my mentor, you know, my mentor, Glenda, Glenda, I just love her. I just like to say, oh, Glenda, because I just love her. It's really fairy, god, fairy godmother stuff, it's that awesome. Glenda name. That is just. I love Glenda. That's my mentor. Um, and uh, so, but th in the meantime, I've taken classes from other people that have been able to, you know, deep, deep dive with me and, and, and teach me other aspects that maybe Glenda and Glenda's not a friend that's by the way friends that is the mark of a great teacher the one who knows their limits and the one who's willing to align you with what you do need that's right exactly and and I completely agree with that and um why you and I are community people yes we are. Um, so 
but a couple people are just asking those questions. So those are those intro questions as you go into your process with both Lorenda and I hold space people to really get comfortable with how you're opening up your abilities, working with spirit and also being empowered and not being fear based or yes. in any way, because there's so much misinformation out there that people um, get you to be afraid of the world of spirit. And what you have to know is you are absolutely a part of the divine you are an empowered spirit in that body and you have just as much space right and um you know empowerment as any energy so do not be afraid <laughs> and no. feel comfortable knowing you are safe and protected and there's nothing to be concerned about right yep, yeah exactly. here it takes time there's a lot of religion there's programming there's a lot of um, things that are just in our consciousness, in our collective, that is a lot of misinformation about spirit. So we are all, we are grounded psychic mediums and very much down to earth, grounded psychic mediums who work based on evidence, as we mentioned, and also integrity and ethics. So if people are, if you're talking to someone and they're giving you information and you feel afraid or fearful or blocked, you need to probably pay attention to that and maybe, um, step away from that <laughs> so and no you you should listen to what uplifts you makes you feel uh, safe and grounded and also you're still using your critical thinking skills i listen i have to tell you something because i haven't had time to tell you and i'll say this quickly so i went to here where i live in portland oregon a metaphysical wellness fair as you know lorenda this weekend and mm -hmm. all i met some wonderful people there and I also did a lot of readings for other practitioners and you know what I'm talking about. And I'm still so blown away by how much so many people are ungrounded with what they're talking about in the spiritual space. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot because I'm used to hanging out with like you and Keisha and people that are really down to earth about their spirituality, but they're like talking about, other, you know, they go so much into this part of it, they're not even in their daily life grounded and centered. And I'm like, right. this is like an in-body experience, friends. It's spirits. simple. Yeah, like Reggie said, the trickster spirits. I'm like, I, I hate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's just like a lot of uh, hyperbole. That's a lot of fear-based stuff now. Is yeah. It's just like people. Is there energy out there we need to be aware of that wouldn't be for our highest good? Of course there Absolutely. is. We're not like rose-colored glasses, but it's so it. easy to ground it out. I've got a list of people. I'm just saying. Right. So just so you know, it's you. So because I, I mean, on TikTok, like we have an amazing resource here, right? We can look up anything. We can look about the Greek gods. We can learn about Caridwin. We can learn about any kind of metaphysical things, but also we can learn that there's a lot of people who do not know what they're talking about, you know? And so please use your discernment yes. and really trust your own integrity, your own intuition. First, foremost, because spirit makes everything simple. It's not some encoded thing that's like difficult. Please know that. And if something feels fearful, yes. it's probably not right. Because there is there. 100% sister. Because just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's fearful. It doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Um, and it, it, it might vibrate differently. Um, yeah, that's a good way to say it. It's because, all vibration. That's the, okay. So good example. When I do channeling work, when Lily or Caridwin come through star, when they when I get those those uh, channeling moments with feminine energy, I'm, it's not necessarily female, but just feminine energy which yeah. is a whole, that's a whole other discussion i understand this but yeah, sure sure it flows through easily it feels comfortable and it feels high and like la, 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 right when i channel masculine energy it's dense and if i wasn't trained and didn't have really great mentors when doing this work it might be something that i'd be afraid of because it feels so different than my it own might, and it might trigger it might have a triggered response yes that's that's conditioning yes to a certain yeah. degree because i've had the training and the people that can teach me the difference i know how to allow that energy to blend with mine as well but i can see how it would feel fearful because masculine energy within a feminine energy i'm very much a feminine flow person it feels wow. different right so if something doesn't sit well you've got to really ask yourself is this something i should actually fear because there are things out there you should not be okay with you know for sure yeah absolutely but not everything's love and light not everything's love and light that's for sure no one is not 
Um, and nine times out of 10, it's the people that's bringing the knowledge. It's more humans you got to worry about, to be honest with you. Yep. Yeah. This, again, when you fear something, it is really in, important to say, why am I fearing this? Where's this coming from? Yeah. Could this be true? And really, let's, let's think about this. It's like some evil thing from the depths of someplace going to come up and eat my face. I don't know. Probably not. I don't see it very often, like if ever. I can't say I've ever seen that happen other than the movies. So where's that coming from? You know, learn how to face your fears <clears throat> um, and, and understand the differences between those vibrations. Um, and I know we're not even talking about our manifesting yet, but I know we're not even talking about our topic. We're going to get to we'll it. Get to it but, think, but you know what? Again, we're flowing with spirit. We well, are. we'll see. <laughs> we are. And, and also, but I think understanding vibration so important. Is, flowing, is so important when talking about manifesting and setting intentions. Because if you're like, well, you know, I want this. What's that energy you're doing? You're, you're flowing through the want. <laughs> You know, the wind energy is spirit. It's trying to communicate. Uh, I thought maybe it was just a scientific thing. Well, the, if in some, I, I will say that there are um, definitely, we have to kind of address the elemental thing. So yeah. um, we can talk about that. And I'm not an expert on this, but I know that I believe that there are elemental energies, definitely. And, um, and this is all about, again, as you're, because I have, you know, um, connect it. And it's funny because you mentioned that because my guides are like, we're going to start doing elemental work. I went, here we go. I've been doing it too. Oh gosh. So you better stop it right now. You better stop it right now. I, so I'm we like, want to, we, yeah. I believe that there are, this is all about, I think. So let's just go, we're, we're going to yeah. go. Yeah. We're going to go back to the beginning, okay. which is what Lorenda and I are talking about. As you create a solid foundation in your practice as a, as an intuitive or a psychic and a medium, and you can clearly discern past your fear-based um, programming as well as your preconceptions, the myths you have, you can then clearly discern between what the energies that you come into contact with. See, one of the things that a lot of people do, and I did a reading on this last night, Lorenda, is that someone came in and they said, well, I'm not really getting any messages from my guides. I don't, I can't hear anything. I said, do you, I asked her all the questions I would about it. And what I realized is that She's putting up so much protection that she can't communicate with the world of spirit. So if we come at it based on fear, we're going to enclose ourselves in a shell and we can't connect. So what we want to say is we are empowered in our bodies and we can open ourselves up comfortably and do discernment as we are we come into contact with all kinds of things in the natural world and spirit world. This is where it gets fun. And that's why I honestly think in my school, I'm so fascinated by so many things that I'm not even an expert in that I want, I have somebody coming in next month who works with spirits of the land. She works with elementals. She works, yes, you're gonna love her. So we want to be open to this and you always want to go with a curious mind and say, oh, what can I learn from you? You know, what's coming into contact with me? Oh, that's interesting. You know, and then Raven is, he's one of, he's in a community. So enjoy the elemental work for me is rooted in my magical practice. So this is why I like the whole idea of exactly of magic and learning to realize that you yourself are a creator being and coming into contact with the elements and working with, oh, it's just, it's endless fascination. <laughs> Armando, I'm so mixed up. So Armando, um, what is, yes, we have so many people have questions. So yeah, yeah. so I would say first work on yourself, discernment, um, working on your fear, you, your lack of believing in your own, you know, sovereignty as a divine being. That's kind of my, my, my baseline. And then learning about discernment when you're working with any kind of energy, whether it be some human, elemental, or spirit. Right. And, and, you know, honestly, I always say one of my, my favorite things to say, um, learn from my mentor is learning to coexist with self doubt is okay. As a practice, as a practitioner, and, and it's okay, because it brings discernment. And it, it does. And spirit doesn't mind if you go, wait, is that legit? You should do it. They want you we to. Embrace, it's like saying, wait a second. <laughs> Is that glad up to me? <laughs> yes, and then you can ask for, you can literally ask for signs or for confirmation 
as simple as my, my going back to my whole back in September set oranges theory, you know, show me oranges. Oh, all I love that. Yeah. that was a crazy few weeks with oranges. And, but you know what? I still use it. I'm like, all right. If, it's like a great if this is legit, I'm, I'm going to need some oranges, you know? Yeah. And you're, you're at, you're, you need, you can't just go in blindly. That's when we, yeah. that's when we can be, that's, if you're going to talk about anything trickster, you're allowing something outside of you, convince you that it's the right thing for you. And what you should be able to say all the time with any energy is, no, I, I need to think about that. You know, I need to look at that. In fact, I was saying one of the, one of the, um, one of the deities I work with, King Belial, and uh, Raven knows about King Belial. Well, King Belial is a very strong earth energy, and he's coming into my practice more as I'm starting to create this school, getting me really grounded and ready. Well, yes. And um, and he said to me yesterday, I was meditating with him, as I do, and he said, you're going to start working with the elementals in the Fae. And I was like, okay, because I used I worked with them three, four years ago, the Fae. And I was like, okay, so how's this going to work? And he's like, just trust me. I was like, okay, but trusting you, you know, <laughs> what are we talk about that. Can we talk about that. I mean, like, so show me how show I should me trust how. I'm you. I'm not a practical girl. And he's like, don't worry about it. Because yeah. he's an earth. His energy is based in earth. So he's perfect for that. Um, interesting. Heard they're tricksters. This is the problem. Everyone's the trickster thing. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that you're giving your power away every time you think of everything as a trickster. You're more important. You're more discerning. You can figure this out. Right. right? You can right. figure this out. Right. Don't mistrust everyone. Just use discernment. Yeah, they're not, so, they're not tricksters. They're just different. different. They're neutral beings. Yeah, they're neutral. They, you they're, know, they're and you just have to vibration. use your own intuition. They're different mm -hmm. vibration. And, and it, you know... I, I again I didn't really believe I'm one of those people like I don't believe it unless I see it I love that or or if I can if there could be a true exchange of of knowledge and understanding and then proof or validation that comes with it and I oh, think that's, that's uh, you know and I'm the same way even if I'm doing a reading if a spirit comes in and says and I baked apple pies I'm like listen that is listen. Not good. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna need some more and what kind of what kind of apple you well, know right i'm going to need like what kind of what does the pan look like i i you got to give me something here you better bring it in with some grab and steam for me that's my grandma grab it's and no steam. different with when i'm working with my master teachers and my goddesses where i'm like listen listen <laughs> discernment they only and the spirit world only respects you more when you have discernment i will say a little tip when you're in that we here's the other thing the problem with us growing up with the effects of say christianity or any heavy religion is that and i have no problem with christianity if that's your thing wonderful but what it does is it makes you believe you are powerless and that there's an outside God that's more powerful than you, and therefore you have no control. So what we have to rethink is, and this goes back to the manifestation aspect of things, is that no, no, we are creator beings and we are a part of the divine. And we are in fact gods ourselves, goddesses. Now, a lot of people are not comfortable with that because they think that's ego and hubris. Oh, I, you better hear that crown. I am what? not comfortable with that. I am a goddess. <laughs> you are. And so we're, we're used to like kowtowing is, please give me something. Can I just pray for this? We are creator based. Or please help me, you know. So it's, it's this is the thing we have to think about. And it, you know, it, this is all part of, the, I was going to say, uh, the manifestation stuff, which we can, yes. we can move into. So I want to hear about you, Fran. Um, tell me about um, you with manifestation. Where, where are you? What, what wisdom do you have to share, friend? Um i how how i how i tell people is you have to believe it's already yours you have to engage in the energy that it's already yours and how you do that is you imagine <clears throat> this is my this is my manifesting 101 i'll be like so when you go to order a something on amazon you get your phone and you look it up and you're like oh i want that right put in your cart you pay for it at that point your brain says, awesome, I'm moving on. We know that that man, we know that Amazon has this. They're like their own gods and goddesses in their own right. They are really. 
But, but at no point do we go, um, who's going to take that order? Who's going to gather the order? Who's going to print the order? Who's going to get the box put together? Who's going to drive the forklift to go get it off the ramp? Who's going to put it in the truck? Who's going to, and what's the guy doing that? Who's, who's the guy that's going to bring it to me? Or who's the person that bring it? What are they having for breakfast? Like, we don't worry about any of the things in between the time that we push by now and when it shows up. But what we can embody is going, it's here. <laughs> we don't worry about how it got there or anything about the logistics of it. And so this is why, and, and, and one good example is, um, when, when you're trying to manifest, when people are like, oh, I need to manifest money. Like why, for what? For what? Well, I need a new house. Okay, well, why do you need a new house? What kind of new house do you want? So should you be manifesting the money or should you be manifesting the house? No, you manifest the thing that you're wanting. You start envisioning the thing that you want. Um, and, and then, and then as you sit with it, start feeling the flow of how it would feel if someone took the blinders off and all of a sudden you're standing in front of your dream house, how would that feel? Embrace how it would feel because then at that point you own that. How would it feel if you order up on your phone a million dollars to give away a charity? I don't know, whatever, or, or the deed to a house. You know, I, I had, I've had, uh, oh, this is a perfect example. So I have a friend who's like, you know, I was really on the fence about getting a nanny versus, you know, childcare, da, 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 right? And she goes, but what's funny is like, the something happened that I may not need the nanny full time anymore, but it's so weird because I knew I needed a nanny, but it was going to cost me like $40,000. But then all of a sudden I got a four, I got a new job that was a $40,000 raise. It like one went with the other. Here you go. And, and you know, and I'll tell people when they feel like they've lost their money on a, on a on something that they put money into. Like, but did you lose the money or did you learn a lesson? And has that money been recouped? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I guess I, that's true. I did come into something. That, so it's not about the actual money any necessarily. Sometimes it's about looking at what it is that you're wanting. And sometimes those things come in in ways that we we have no, we don't care. We ordered it up on Amazon. We don't care about what the UPS man that day is doing to right. get it to us. The mechanics of it, yeah. We don't, yeah. It's, not about, it's not about the mechanics of it. You let the universe do what it needs to do to align things. Then as long as you're functioning in the greatest and highest good. Okay, so why is it, maybe do you want a new house? Oh, you want a new house that doesn't have a leaky roof and that's in a safer neighborhood. Well, maybe it's not the dream house that you thought you wanted, but if you're manifesting a safe place for you to exist, for your children to be in a safe neighborhood, then that opportunity is going to, it may be in the most obscure way, but that opportunity is gonna to come to you. And that's how I see in a very generic term of, of embracing the things that we want as we already have them. And, yes, I love and, and also setting the intention that things that come to you are only aligned for you and your greatest good because you got to be careful if you start you start manifesting really specific things and then you end up in that neighborhood where you got a psycho neighbor that is going to burn down your house then you, you forgot to mention that i want nice neighbors in that nice neighborhood <laughs> like right. yeah yeah when yeah. so you manifest a feeling of safety security and knowing okay. that you're you have that you have that roof over your head, right? For in, in the safety and security, but you're not. So, and and I also my other take is if you are, um, if you are living that fear of like, well, do I even deserve it? You know, I want Absolutely. it. You're gonna manifest the want. I don't know. So all that being said, if you're just learning how to do it, I tell people: imagine that you're ordering something on Amazon. You're hitting send. And you're imagining that two days later it shows up in the form of exactly what you need and how that would feel. Yes. And and that and, and bond with that energy versus oh praying for what you want, praying for what you want. Yeah, like it's something want. outside. Yeah, it's like are you worthy enough right. of this experience? I right. love so that so what much. What do, what do, how about you? How do you? I love, I, that. I love everything you said. I have, um, so, and I think I, and you, I mentioned this in the beginning, I'm teaching a two-day workshop 
on um i would say it's manifestation but it's also also as you mentioned what you just said is like do you believe you're worthy so and it goes into healing your money story so um so one of the things i just use myself as an example i started working on the law of attraction like you when i was like 20 and i started i studied I studied it a lot. I started looking at a lot of ways in my life of how I wasn't getting the things I wanted. I just became a student of it. And so this is my honest truth. One of the things is when I um, I was not you know, married in my early 30s and I knew I wanted this primary relationship in, in that was lasting and meaningful and supportive and all the things. So, but I knew I had to heal some things in my own energy field Yes. that were not aligned with that vision and so what and that's where in that's in this really workshop cool. i'm doing that's where we go about doing that deep shadow mm. work and um we look at things like your your history around whatever it is you're wanting mm. to manifest we look around um also things you can have in your ancestry around poverty and a lower a consciousness which puts you down into a lower vibration that doesn't make you a match for that wonderful experience, what you said. Yeah. So we're, the first day of the workshop, we're doing deep dive into like your subconscious. And that includes um, your own family history, your own beliefs, but also where you are on a soul level, because you might be carrying things with you from past lives, things like that. And it, you can do it in a way that's not, it doesn't have to, you know, go on mm. for years and years. You can do the work very quickly, actually. And then the second day, and this is my belief, that's, for me, it was easier once I did that clearing to then embody what does it feel like to be in a healthy relationship. It was easier for me to embody it. Um, and so, and that's when I step in. So the second day is all about how do we then align ourselves and manifest this so we can truly feel that vibration. And that's for me, where I work a little bit um with deities and i believe when you align yourself with these guides it put puts you into a place of being supercharging your intentions um you don't need to do it it's just what works for me you can do it all on your own without anything you are a powerful being but for me uh, many um deities and goddesses have specialties and so um, for me in scent, like I work with goddess Isis in as far as self-love, embodiment, empowerment, showing up in the spaces I show up in with a lot of confidence didn't come all by myself. I got that right from my guides a lot. So that's why the, the, the empowerment, it really takes you on a very deep level into these things. So if you feel like I'm meant for something more expansive, but my insights don't feel that way, sometimes... You know, that's why I say just putting a Band-Aid on uh, with an affirmation doesn't necessarily make you a vibrational match. So it's a little more in depth, but exactly, it's very much about what you said, you have to feel it. It's all about that energy. And sometimes you can't do that on without clearing and then aligning yourself with higher vibrations. I guess that's the best way to explain it without sounding too woo-woo, but that's, you know, the nuts of it. And you know, what happened was finally, when I was able to feel that energy of what, and I did write down my manifestation of what I wanted in a, in a partner, you know, I literally got everything on my list because it was for my highest good. Yes. Um, and we've been, you know, married for 25 years and it is, it is what I wanted and needed. And so, and, and it was a lot of hard work. <laughs> I love, I was a lot of hard work. I had to really work on my side of low self-esteem, Lorenda. I wasn't confident. I thought I didn't deserve it on a subconscious level, right? So, and we all have that, right? We all kind of think, if you let's say with money, okay, can you imagine yourself right now walking into a room with a lot of people who have a lot of who are wealthy? Okay, so can you imagine yourself going into that room? How would you feel? Right? That's, a, that's my litmus test. Like, you know, and Lorenda, I know that this is, you know, you, you get this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Since you're, you know, you get this expansiveness. This is yeah. who you are. So how do you feel when you're with people who are like, going into a restaurant and ordering anything they want the menu ordering expensive bottles of wine how do you feel when someone's driving a nice car are you feeling like i'm not worthy of this so you have to understand that's all just vibration right yes. and um and also if depending on your background and your history as far as your upbringing or if you grew up with a lot of you know poverty or um non-opportunities you maybe had a, a you were a, had a single parent who struggled and worked many jobs you <coughs> 
transmute that energy. You can absolutely transmute that and be in alignment with your high school. And I see that happen a lot. I came from a very, very, very poor upbringing. And um, I tell you what, my mom was like, just because we are poor, it doesn't mean we have to act. See, that is, talk about that, please. So, yeah, because yeah. I will use you as an example, because I mean, you know, you came from that. And then now you're living very abundantly. Now I'm coming to you yes. live from my wife. And I yeah, agree. and and this isn't like you came into it with a lot of like, oh, I yeah, I'm coming in. My family's driving this, and I'm doing that. You came from a single mom and a lot of lot of trauma. Yes, right. A lot. And and I just remember when I was younger, always just believing that this was not this life did not align. Like, and and my, my thing is, my mom was like, she it's we none of us are afraid of my brothers and I. None of us are afraid to put the work in. We are, oh, I, I see. Yeah. Yeah, nothing was ever handed to us. Um, that's not true. There were things that were handed to us because people felt bad for us because we were like wow. four. Yeah. But but there was, uh, I don't know. I just never, I never gave in to the idea that I was meant to be poor the rest of my life. And and I and I joke because I'm like, well, that's because it's a big Leo energy. But you came in on a soul level. You came in with that chart, friend. You yes. you designed that. I did. You know. I did. And I so. knew that I was never meant to. And, and the thing is, like, I, I when I walk into the room of people with money, and I just I I think as a medium, I see them for who they are. I don't. And then I started realizing, I'm nicer than them. I think I deserve a little bit more than they do. <laughs> I'm not good. Like, you know, and I felt like I, from a very early age, I learned to vibrate with what I felt like I, I should be able to have. And, and, and also with the mindset that I wasn't afraid to work for it. Yes. I never expected it to be handed to me. I wasn't afraid to work for it. I wasn't afraid to put my time in for it. And, and now I'm that person that you were describing about how does it feel to watch people go in and order or whatever they. And that's what I'm like. saying. This is what I mean. Like it's it's a come thing now one thing i want to mention that i just thought of it something in the comments triggered me to remember this one of the things and you know this because you do past life regressions one of the things we have to understand is our subconscious beliefs about having things having money um what does it mean to be wealthy and just think for a moment for to yourself do we because even my my husband has this little he equates being rich with people that are greedy irresponsible selfish self-indulgent right. not thinking of others mm. imagine if you're projecting all that onto money you're putting right. something on a frequency so yes. then you're saying i can't then it's you're not a good person if you have money right Re think about all that stuff so i had to sort of and i can't believe i'm calling my husband out on this but i am um but anyway he was like well you know he's driving that kind of car and so he's doing that kind of thing because you know my kids went to a nice school and there's parents who have okay you know quite a lot uh, you know as we have a lot it's just that his idea is like well he was driving that i went look at your belief system sweetie like you're thinking because of something like this it's triggering something in you from your own childhood that is telling you this is bad when it's simply information and and believe me you know you want that damn car too so just own it and so, like you're projecting something and this is also guys it does come a lot sometimes not just from this lifetime it comes from past lives of like making obligations and vows to have chastity and have less than and being a servant a lot of people in this space who are healers and you know psychics and mediums have taken vows of poverty it's in many lifetimes and you're coming up against that and trying to get more and saying well I'm, i don't want anyone else to be not have something if i have something the universe is endless. Everybody can have whatever the hell they want. It's there's no value on what you actually have. So you've got to kind of you see, you can only you can't put new wine and old wine skins, y'all. You can't put that consciousness if you're limiting it. Yeah, if that it, it does. It 100 percent makes sense. And I look at the dynamics between my husband and I. He has always believed that he deserved literally everything literally everything and he gets whatever he wants like it but he also he puts in the work 
We, he you and I know he, he, he doesn't he, just think it's handed to him. I know. But he's also in a position where he is paid for that work. Yes. I, I align myself with, I want to do this work. And in order to do this work, I have to be covered. Like if you want me to do this work, you need to be able to put oh, a roof. You have to have all your, more than, all enough, more than and, enough, more than enough. Yeah. As long as if you want me to do this work with integrity and feeling safe, like I don't have to hustle, like I don't have to, cause you and I've talked about that. You know, there's, there are, there are readers out there that this is their full-time job, but if they don't do it, if they don't book the gig, if they don't get the things, then there's that fear of, am I going to pay rent? Where I have tried to manifest and set the intention that I can do this work and that's fine, you know, it, but I have to be safe. Yeah. Oh, and, and, so and, and stable, stable. stable. Stable and safety, not yeah. thinking house, big cars. You know, my I let my husband do the car thing. Like that's his, it's literally his last name and he's obsessed with cars. I let him do him like whatever, buddy, if that makes you feel good, I could care. I, I love it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, God missed my 2008 Honda minivan that I could put all kinds of junk in and I could run into things if I need to. I mean, I'm not that bougie. I am, but I'm not. Um, but you know, that that's what I've tried to not manifest the dollars. I've tried not to manifest the specific yeah, you're about thing. the vision. You're about the you're about what it is about to, life. to do the work without yeah. having to ever without worry, like without worry. Do the work that's without it. worry. And that's like literally that is it in a nutshell, because here's the thing. And um so as an example, you know, if being it's that's why it takes a while before if you are a spiritual, either a psychic or a medium or you read tarot or whatever you're doing to be able to not have the filter of anything connected to finances in your work and be present. That is lacing a eye of a needle of a thread that takes time. So you have to do a lot of shadow work around money and finances and how do I do this? How do I show up in this work and hold space for others? That's why for me, and it's interesting because right now I am built, and I think I mentioned this to you, I'm working with um, uh, one of my mentors who is has 20 years as an educator and she's helping me build curriculum. Um, for a year long teacher mentorship training. Um, yeah, um, which is, the next leg of what me working with my girls and one of the things we talked about yesterday Lorenda was about you being a very stable um mentor for your students and and part of that has to do a piece of that has to do with emotional spiritual belief system and your heart and your and your life but also it's your finances. So if your finance and it's <laughs> if your finances, if you're not stable, it's very hard to show up for other people in yes. a way that's really grounded and authentic. So if you have chaos mm -hmm. in like your personal life or your financial life and stuff, you it's very hard to hold a, that energy for other people for their development. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I can understanding. It's funny because I put the price up for my workshop which is a two day in depth workshop, which has very, a lot of printed materials. It's gonna have video, it's like, it's all the things, right? And someone said to me, wow, it's really expensive. And I thought that's it right there because that's your money story talking about it. It's placing value on something. I was like, and I was like, respectfully, that's, yeah, for you, it probably is. And I mean, like, I, I like, you, you know what I mean? Like it, everyone's got a belief system around finances, especially with money, because it's such a foundational thing in our lives. Right. And so um, the more healing and clearing you can do, the the more in alignment you'll be with what your true vision is and your nature and being able to manifest. And it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight, right? Exactly. No, and, and honestly, like where I am now compared to where I was 25 years ago, holy oh, Again, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that I alone paid for my therapist's lifestyle. <laughs> you know, and 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 working through a lot of that and, yeah. and getting to where we are now. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a process, man. I mean, and this is why easy. like no, but I know you and I are talking about it like, well, it's just so easy. It's it's not easy. Not easy. It, um, and 
you know, and if you're if you're between do I feed my family or do I pay for a class, feed your fucking family. Yeah, and also then don't don't put pressure on the work. It's kind of like if you're a musician or if you're a dancer or if you're a medium, like get a day job, dude. I mean, like and you and I, let's just say talk about the work and not and this is not about us per se, but I did not leave my job of being a hairstylist and a salon owner for 30 years until my business in this business, which I'm just, and you know this, yeah. just left two weeks ago. Weeks ago. And I had two equally thriving businesses, right? Equally thriving, equally thriving. And until spirit said, okay, it's time. And this one was up a little and you have stability there. There's, I can then be stable for others. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and I fucking worked at this for a long ass time. And I was, and there was moments I was like, really? You don't have to do bomb ta da You know, <laughs> can I just be me? And they're like, eight more months. You're not ready. Your numbers aren't right. I was like, okay, I believe you. Yeah. You know, but, but you also trust your living. Them. do your you, living. You trusted spirit through the process. Absolutely. And, and that's, and I think that's the key is, is that, you know, I, I just, my, my goal is, it's like, you have to look at the end goal. Ask yourself, why do you want this? Why do you want this? Why do you want this? And ultimately, once you get to the end, then at the final why, like, why do I want money? Why do I want a house? Why do I want a car? Well, because I want to be able to go to places to do this. Okay, well, I want to teach dance. Why do you want to teach dance? I want to help others. So, so ultimately, you get to the end of, you keep asking yourself, why that? Okay, then why? But why? Once you get to that final end, that is what you focus in on and allow to flow. I think you teach a class on this. Sure. I'm going to challenge you. I want you to teach a class on this. I'm, fo I'm focusing on the Ooh, law. Yeah. No, I seriously, that is so it because then you're just, and even then, so um, the, um, you know, the guides I'm working with, especially, they are saying to me, you are putting in so much stress around manifesting the bigger things. And right, I'm just being honest. Like for me, you want me to build a school? What the hell? You know how much infrastructure is in that? I'm used to doing my own thing, but then I have, you know, you know, because you have a school. I so do. <laughs> um, it's a lot, it's a lot of infrastructure and you have to be working at it all the time. And so um, knowing that and just believing in that, you have to be able to turn up. I mean, it's, it's definitely takes a while. And the other thing I want to say to all of you developing psychics and mediums understand that that's the problem a little bit with in the culture we're in especially with everything happening quick you know what i'm saying like expect it's gonna take you two years to build a business just expect it um and this is why i when i'm working with my students the ones that really i'm mentoring i'm like dude i'm probably gonna be working with you for two years so just know this is a long journey it's not gonna happen overnight you're gonna be an amazing psychic you're gonna be a great medium but building a business it we know sister there's i do well and i've got i own three so yeah i get it I, you know, I am happily owning one, and I'm very happy at just being one right now. I think we're ready to. I think we're getting ready to pare down to two. So, yeah. um, it's just a lot, a lot of bandwidth required, and mm -hmm. it takes. It does take time, and you know, I even look at it. Two years, when you're making major change, is not uncommon. To be honest, like oh, yeah. even okay. I mean, you can probably make a quick buck. I mean, not to right. say it. But you might get it sooner, but expect it's going to be two years. Exactly. Yeah. Because there's so much ground. There is. There's so much groundwork. There has to be. And if it's a business, that means there's an energy exchange with clients. There has to be, you know, oh there's just research. There's so much that has to go into it. That's People so are like, I'm going to open a school tomorrow. I was like, you're going to get your ass kicked. And enjoy that. That's enjoy your journey. That. I'm like, oh, yo, yo. Right. 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 I, I'm going to, the other thing is that, and I'm not, this is not to say anybody, and this is my, I will say, I'll call out my own lovely students who I adore and they all are going to be teachers. Right. And I've had to say to them at different times, please understand this. I don't want you to rush into teaching or mentorship. <laughs> I know that's part of your soul vision and it is before you. But please understand the more work you put in now into the groundwork of building your own business, just being a practitioner yep. and thriving in that, then start holding space for others. Some people just kind of go, I'm a medium or I'm a psychic and they want to do it like six months later. Okay, understandably, maybe it works with some people, but um, 
holding space for other humans in their developments takes a lot of, a in, in my opinion, our opinions, um, integrity. It takes a lot of self healing. It takes a lot of um, not inserting your ego into the space and holding space for others when they are when they might trigger you and understanding how to do that with grace, elegance, and mercy. That should not happen in a few weeks. And our view just not. became a medium. That does not. It does not. It does not. And just because again, just because you can doesn't you mean you should. Sure. And I don't have this, we don't, and Lorraine and I don't think we have it down, just nope. so we're clear. And she and I, we, this is why it's good to have a friend, like, cause she, she'll, I say to her, does that feel off balance? Do I feel a little out of my, I said, you better tell me. And, and she, to me, she says, Carrie, does that sound right to you? All the time. Yeah. So because you have to have a, checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Checks and balances. And that, I think that's where the importance of spiritual community comes in too, yeah. um, is that you have to be able to be and taking your ego and your pride out of the way or yeah. fear of, ooh, are they better than I am? You know, Carrie, like you and I have no, like we, we just bounce, like, oh my God, our phone calls. <laughs> 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 But like seriously. An air sign and a fire sign creating question. Right. <laughs> so so it's important to have that person in your community that isn't that doesn't see you as a threat. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's the yeah. other thing. And and also sometimes maybe you're the threat and you need to check yourself. Are you trying to tear someone else down to make yourself feel better? And that's and where you're understanding your pain in. journey. You're gonna get triggered. You're gonna get yeah. triggered by why is the why why are people going to somebody else and not me it's gonna happen why are they why are they anybody could be a practitioner of any kind why are they getting for readings from them why are they training with them because they can't you can't give anybody everything you just cannot you right. cannot you have to be humbly so and i will say all of the colleagues that i have in this space who i really trust and who i spend time with we always refer our clients to them, you know, and, and say, I, I mean, and speak highly of them understanding you're, I, I like call myself the homeroom teacher. I go, if you're working with me as a mentor, I'm your homeroom teacher, but you have subject teachers that I cannot teach. Like, I can't like, you know, if you want to learn about, you know, the Hellenic gods, I'm going to have you go to my Alyssa. If you want to learn about, you know, um, Celtic shamanism. I'm gonna have you go to someone else. If you wanna learn about, you know, the specialties that Lorenda has, go to them, please. If you wanna work with in this, um, you know, group of like spirits or angels or deities, work with this person or, you know, I mean, there's so, it's just, it's important to be, you know, keep in that alignment and um, not allow your bias or your filter um, to affect your students growth <laughs> please yeah. um and that, that you're right it is so important and, and think about it if you sign up for college are you going to sign up and like there's just one teacher at college <laughs> lilia said i'm having amazing homeroom teacher yeah. oh <laughs> lilia i just messaged you this morning so like my students i look at that as the same way like i am their homeroom teacher you're their homeroom teacher I'm their home space i come in i take attendance i like tell them okay so get your stuff together do the da, 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 da. this is your schedule for the day that is a great analogy actually i know it keeps coming and, to me and you know yes. if if you know, if you're if you're going to build that foundation, you have to be willing to fill the rooms and we can't be everything. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I think it's that thing of like, I get so excited. At, hi, Ermi. I get so excited. At, hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I get so excited of myself. You and I love learning. Yeah. So like, um, you know, we love being students in our own. Very happy to have dropped into this conversation. Been working on me and all year. Oh, good. Oh my gosh, amazing, Olive. Oh, good. It's so nice. I love that. I know the homeroom teacher. I'm definitely like we. Are, Lorraine and I are like baking cookies and doing room assignments and you know, wiping some notes, wiping some noses. Okay, we have blankets. We have snacks. We have snacks. <laughs> we do. I'm I've got grown up snacks. <laughs> I have grown up snacks. I have snacks on my altar for my deities. We have Lord Mammon and Duchess Duke Boone. So there we go. That's oh, part of my altars. I'll go around my altars. Like, I got Lucifer over here. I got 
I got Hecate, I got Isis, I got a lot going on in here today. <laughs> yeah, you always need snacks, that's it, right? So the thing about it is that everyone, how do you feel about smoking? None of my business, um, none of my business. I, it's your thing, I don't care. I think you have to do it. Now, I will tell you right now, you can talk to my students about this. Um, when they first came to me, and I'll be honest, I do have a thing about professional presentation. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that right now. And so when I said to them, I said, I would rather you not do vaping on a live, yep. okay? Because you are literally pushing out potential clients when you're vaping. It's not professional. Okay, now, if you wanna do it, I don't care. If you wanna do it on your own time, that's none of my business. But I will tell you, if you're teaching in my spaces, you will not vape, period. You can vape all you want afterwards, but dude, can, you can't go into any business and just be vaping. Like, it's not professional. Let's just say what it is. It's not professional. It's not. You're, you're I mean? not there for yourself. You're there for the client. It's just, it looks tacky. It's, it's. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's spiritual self vape. Oh, you mean like, like, oh, like. Yeah. Again, it's again, it's none of it's none of our business. If that's it's none what, of my business. Yeah, none of our business. So yeah, Kenzie, like you're asking a whole lot of deep questions. I know. Like, She's like, what about that? Is it missing? I don't care if you want to do plant medicine, go for it. I don't do care. Do whatever about you need to do. I, I'm I don't. Especially in a oh, no, space don't apologize. You're fine. Space. Don't apologize. Don't no, apologize. No. You're fine. No, but like, uh, I, I personally don't engage in that at all like the most you're going to get out of me is caffeine i won't even i won't even drink a glass of wine on when you're holding space well because you think space. about it like you're channeling I'm spirit fully attuned i'd be exactly i'm channeling spirit um i always joke that you know the only time you'll ever catch me doing any kind of predictions or spirit work is when i'm with my friends having having some wine they're like all right lauren is on glass two who's getting some good now out. But they're my friends, so it's different. Yeah. But you'll never, from a professional point of view, you'll never see me do it. On I know it's just a thing, and maybe we're old school. I've found it to be helpful when starting in my own practice, but it can become a crutch. I get that. And listen, let me just say, this is no shade, no judgment. You know, I grew up like I grew up in Berkeley, California, a land of hippies. I, me and Mary Jane were good friends. I'm not saying anything. You know what I'm saying? And me and the Marlboro man for a time were friends. I used to roll my own drum. I, you know, I, I smoked for years, right? Yeah. But I have a thing. I'm particular when it comes, if you're holding space for another human being and you are channeling spirit, you, you know, your needs are, your like vices should be like maybe put to the side for holding space. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Air me. Yeah, no, I was like, no, I had fun. I had really fun. I, I grew up in the 80s. Come on. Yeah, Jeez. You grew up in the 80s and then you're out west. Come on. Yeah, but I am, I am very much holding space. Now, it was interesting because I, I was on a live from somebody I, and watching someone and he, and this person said, that they once once a week or once every month or something what this person does is they will take and they'll take something that would be called you know a little something they they eat something that can put you in an old space yeah. and they might do a little smoky smoke and then they do tarot reading so for me friends i will I, if one of my students did that We'll have a problem because i'm i can't vouch for you then i can't vouch for your energy um you can do it i don't care what you do on your own free time but for me and and you're going to these levels you have to understand how are people interpreting that do you only want clients that are going to see that because a lot of people i know would be like i'm heading into someone else's room yeah, yeah I mean, I do don't. what you want to do i don't care my a lot of my friends do that you know? do, again it, it's on you to do what you feel drawn to do and led to do and uh yeah. Like I, I'm not going, I personally do not align with that. Yeah. It's me. I'm looking at it for, for more of the people I train, yes. you know, um, because I do expect a lot out of my students. You yes. can, I mean, I do expect them. I don't rip into them. I, they, uh, I adore them, but if something's a little off with the energy, um, I will say it like mama you know, of something being off. If there's a little ego in there, if there's a little imbalance, like you do, you're the same. Um, I yeah. will, because that's what they're paying me for. <laughs> they're not paying yeah. me to like, you know, come through as a, 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 right? So she asked, how do I call my brain? Honestly, I've learned to work with spirit, yeah. which is the whole point to all of this, is yeah. the energy flow, what we are attracting. I don't need outside substances to make me chill out.
They just don't. I know people say to me, oh my God, I, t- I told you this. So I, so one of my dear clients, okay, who is a client for hair here in Portland, <laughs> okay, and she does journeying, if you can imagine, uh, with clients. So she will um, do, I'm not sure what she's using, it's some kind of like, Mushroom, and um, she does journey work with them, and she goes into spirit space with them. And does journey work, it's powerful medicine, right? It's yeah. what she's doing is powerful medicine, um, cyclists even. And so she said to me, "We should journey together sometime." And I was like, "Do you know what my life is like? I don't need a journey, girl. I see spirits all the time, and I got you know, I got ancestors walking around. Like I can see akashic records on a normal day, you know." And I, I see deities, I see angels, I see elements. Why do I need that? I need to be earthing. Come on now. Like, Camille, I get it. Like, if it's your thing, hey, I'm all for it. Like I said, child, child grew, grew up in Berkeley, California in the 80s. So do what you want to do, you know, and if it helps you, great. But for me, it's not a, it's a why. I can't say that anytime I've, I've very rarely have I even done anything like that in my 52 years of existence. But when I have, the things I see, I know are not genuine. They're yeah. not actual things. They're hallucinations in my mind. Right. Um, you can't discern really yeah. what is spirit. And it does, you know, I mean, I get it. Like I remember days when I would be in the bathtub and I'll just want to, I'm just going to partake. And I'd be like, this is amazing. Oh, well, and I'm thinking to myself, compared to what I am now, I'm like, oh, that was just, I don't know what that was, but it wasn't spirit. What's that right? Spirit? right? That was my spirit. That when, was- you, when you've truly experienced spirit, yeah. you'll know the difference. And oh, I think that's, yes. I think that's truly important because the buzz that I get, the high that I get from channeling when I do trance work. Yes. None, oh my God. Oh my God. You can't top. My crown is buzzing. My crown's buzzing. So you can't, you can't top that like with any external thing. Absolutely. You just can't. Because I, and I tell you what, well, remember when Rising Phoenix, that whole shenanigans? Yeah. That was, I think I was, I think I was on, in in a buzzing mode for a good week oh, after yeah. that because it structurally genetically like spiritually just changed me and all it was was channeling spirit it had nothing to do with ingesting anything to change me and so let's talk about that let's talk about channeling spirit and what you and i have spoken about when you're channeling a god a goddess or a deity through your vessel so because i want you to speak on what your experience was and i want to tell you Again, I this last week, and I'll tell you really briefly, then I'll tell you the story after Lorinda tells her story. But I had, um, I went to a metaphysical wellness fair and I had a booth there this weekend. And I realized that there are practitioners everywhere who are, and there's clients um, and specifically who are channeling spirit. They are connecting in a lot of other ways, but they're so ungrounded. And I was like, oh Lord, we got some work to do. But anyway, I want you to talk about your ethics and how you channel spirit, because we've talked about this, um, how it works, the mechanics of it, if you don't mind, because you and I are technical people. And I think this is an important piece of when you're working with spirit to make yourself feel grounded and safe, safe. You know what I mean? I know. We'll talk about that. We'll talk yes. about it. So can you speak on that, please? And then I'll tell you my story of, oh, my God. Anyway. So, so when when I work with my mentor, Glenda, she, like, when we do, we do a lot of our classes virtually in, in class, class mode, right? And unless I unless she has met with her students one-on-one and done channeling one-on-one or in a classroom one-on-one together, it is not allowed to be done accidentally in in class when doing readings for others because there is it's a giant energy exchange whether i am channeling just one of my spirit guides which by the way spirit guides vibrationally are not that far off from us right regular spirit right. guides they're just like a level up from that's us regular spirit that's exactly right that's why they're such good helpers yes yeah. and we can feel them more than others and then you've got these gods and goddesses or master teachers master level they're just bigger energy, wiser energy. Ooh. You have your body has to be prepared to have an energy exchange. So 
of course my my guides start out by just having me channel them because they're the closest thing to our vibration and i don't want somebody else's grandpa coming through me and talking i don't want that i'd rather have someone i trust yeah so the mechanics of it i basically ground myself do protection of energetic only the good things come through energetically yeah. um, photonic light all the things right and then i invite that that guide to blend with not just overshadow when i meet when i teach people how to meet spirit guides i have them overshadow their energy so you can feel them but you're still separate yes where when a spirit comes in and you are going to channel a spirit highly um when a, a spirit comes in you allow them to fully step into your body and blend with your energy with this every cell of your being is blending with them and you are connected mental mind to mental mind heart space to heart space um and then you are they use your vocal cords they use your voice to say what needs to be said so what will happen oftentimes when i when i channel especially on video you can see it like i'll transfigure you'll see like and actually you'll see oh, that's like, so sweet. Like, like you'll see like especially lily 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 looks so oh, thank you so much lily looks so nice she's got the nicest face when i channel her i'm not that nice like she's so sweet she's like i can't even do it like i cannot even you're like she's not me and i'm not her but that's why i have her <laughs> that's right so she's so nice and she'll step in and and she will speak through me um now when i had star or caridwin come in my master teacher come in i noticed that was a much bigger energy like my body felt fully expanded when i invited that right. in and it's because their energy is bigger but i feel like i had to start with it's kind of like exercising you don't run the yes. marathon the first day you, yes. you you take a walk around the block to start yeah you is your block or walk around the block learning how to you know just to kind of connect in with yourself is the walk around the block then you walk around the neighborhood then you uh, the, then then you you expand your you, spiritual musculature your endurance gets stronger, right? Your body gets stronger. It is a physical exchange. Anyone who tells you otherwise, just walk away. It is a literal physical exchange because I can feel what I know days before I'm getting ready to channel and I may not even have anything on my docket. I'd be like, oh, okay. Something's coming. Something's coming. We're going to see this. My crown is tingling. But right. But it took me, it took me several, uh, it took me a couple of times of channeling before I realized, oh, okay, this is what's happening. And then over the summer, you know, I, I've, I've, I had only really channeled feminine energies. And then over the summer, I went to a spiritual, a spiritual salon in, ju in July, right? Class so in July. July. And 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 I knew all week I could feel myself being expanded, but I also knew I was going to be doing trance classes. And I was like, "Oh, this should be good." I'm super curious. I assumed, silly me, that it was going to be my people coming through. Nope, nope, it was not. Um, and uh -huh. in, in the trance class, in one of three that we did, this and I could feel my body physically expanding, like I felt it. And I was like, oh, this is, and I was getting hits and I was seeing images and I was seeing, I'm like, rising Phoenix, who's rising Phoenix? I don't even know who this is right now. And then all these people were channeling, but I could feel myself like attaching to them, like this yeah, board you were, attaching. You were probably doing some kind of healing work through your vessel and, was, and, right? And yes, and also just pulling and drawing on their energy of expansion to be able to allow this giant masculine godlike energy to come in and like i was like and i and i was looking around i remember feeling like i was in a daze and and i looked at my mentor and she made eye contact with me she goes are you going next and i said i think i am 
<laughs> I have no idea what's about to happen right now, but I think when I close my eyes, something's about to happen. And I close my eyes and it just felt like wings shot out of my back. I felt like this heat of this energy of this giant rising phoenix is what he called himself. And I could feel the flames coming off of my face. And the room when I came back, by the way, was noticeably hotter. It was bizarre. But and I had this booming voice and I, I like my head was turned and it was like, it, but it was such a big and I had like physical reactions that I don't people were telling me like what what I looked like and what had happened when I don't remember anything I said. I don't remember anything at this point now at the time I remembered some of the things that I was in trance basically and just allowing spirit to say what they needed to say and 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 my body was just responding to such a large energy and and then when they left i almost felt like a balloon that had been blown up for days and then deflated yeah that's a very good analogy isn't it yeah. and and i not have to, like a lot of master channels who really are doing it the way it should be done they have to take a couple days to recalibrate their physical body afterwards to come yeah. back into the mundane yes. which is that's so important so important and and luckily because i was in a safe space with other in people trained to channel and yes. and my mentor i i had everything i needed now it was super important and this is where the the lines that i was feeling like tied to everybody else you know what they were doing for me by doing that it wasn't just drawing energy they were holding the space they were keeping me grounded it is so nice. important that when you channel, you've got someone opposite of you that is holding that space and keeping you grounded because you could stay there and interacting, interacting. So like in that exchange, I was saying a lot of things, but also my mentor was encouraged, like asking questions and yeah. saying, thank you so much. And keeping that exchange, yes. And keeping that exchange, that, that cycle going and and then and then it's like i don't know what she said but there was something she said that helped that helped the, this deity know that it was time to go and where if you do it on your own by yourself and you try channeling in like you could it, it's such a, it feels amazing I, who wants to leave that and go to work no one like no and then one. Getting, god forbid you're driving a car after that oh my right. god Right. So, but by having someone there, part of that safety, the mechanics of it is that you've got someone that can hold the space and keep you grounded. Basically hold your feet to the ground and keep you in place energetically and can encourage that energy exchange and also remind you to come back when it's time. Right. That's right. And, and that, you know, that, that's huge. That's huge. And that it's no different when, you channel your higher self, you know, you, you've done your BQH, you've, you, you're beyond quantum healing certified. When you're hypnotizing or putting someone under and that you go into the theta state, you go into and contact the higher self, that's no different. You're channeling. It feels different. It, it feels different physically and it's an entity. It's still you, so it's familiar, but it's still coming through. And it's our job as the practitioners to say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna count back from 10. And we're gonna bring you back. We're disconnecting in all that matters of the lives that you are, the life now. And so we put oh all God. those things. And therein is it such a key things. part of the work. Yes. Yeah. And it's our job as practitioners to keep people grounded. In the mundane. The, so I thank you so much for explaining that so beautifully. I love that. And <laughs> and, that's, and herein lies and herein lies my story. I want to hear the story. My, we, I, this is why it's so good if you are a practitioner to go into public and and for a lot of reasons but if you go into like a metaphysical wellness like a fair or something right so and most of the people i read so i went to a fair for those of you that didn't hear this earlier i went to a fair this weekend in my hometown and did i had a booth um and the people that i read this weekend were all practitioners except for i think one or two so um and i had a well and then i had a woman come to me at the very end on sunday and she said I have kind of a complicated prop issue. Would you be able to take a look at it? I said, we'll sit down, let's have a chat. And that's when the story of, she said, well, since 2014, I have been going to a woman who's a channel. She channels just 
I'll go through this. I'm trying to be super grounded when I say this. I, she, I, she, this woman channels this group of angels. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we go. And so, and brings messages. It's always been wonderful, except for the last two times where I feel like there's an energy coming through that is feels very harsh and not uplifting and negative. I said, okay. And I said, and then she said to me, this woman has been a channel blending with them since she was a child. And I said, okay, let me understand the mechanics of how these sessions work. Is anyone there with her while she's channeling? Another person, is someone there anchoring the space when she's doing these? And she, this woman is out, like Bashar, like out. The, her human is up on a cloud somewhere in the astrals. And that, that's how I, when I channel, I'm like. She's come through. Now we know this is, this is a, this can be a very sacred thing. Okay. However, however, if someone in their person as the vessel, the channel has not done the work on themselves, does not have things in place to keep things grounded, as Lorenda mentioned, whatever those checks and balances are, yeah. then she has no idea what these energies are channeling through. She has no clue. Yes. So, and I was like, and so I'm, she's telling me all this. She's saying, can you look at the energy of this for me? Because it's always been good. Do you need me to sh play you the recording? I go, no, you don't need to play me. <laughs> So I, I said, let's just pull tarot on it because I wanted there to be something evidential so she could see it for herself, what was coming up. And straight away, my whole team was like, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. And everything about it was, and I, when I, then when I went in further and I looked at energetically the, what was happening in the session, I could just see that the channel probably means well but her own development growth and her procedure of how she's channeling is why these lower, these, these other energies are coming through per, being perceived as ego. Now, one thing to note, I will tell you, and this is why you have to know what your groups of beings, deities, gods that you're working with. And, and this is where you have to be educated, right? So it, this is the problem with this new, new age movement. Everyone's like, well, I'm channeling these higher v beings and I'm channeling these, you and know, just because you guys, them doesn't mean you sure. I'm channeling and they want me to be a channel for yeah. spirit and, and I'm bringing in the new earth. So I'm trying not to make fun of it. Instead, I'm trying to say, we have to go about this with such critical thinking and discernment and understand in each case by case, what's actually going on what information is being led, and you've got to have that sense of, of integrity, grounding, and um, and critical thinking in this process, so you can take apart what the heck's going on in any interaction. I had so many people this weekend who were like my age. Some of the things they said to me, who are practitioners, that were so shocking, and I thought no one is grounded. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the 5D and they're bringing in the new earth and they're a vessel. And listen, I get it because I, I think you're dealing, you are dealing with a spirit world. You are dealing with spirits. I think you are, but you have to understand them and understand what you're dealing with and make, and that's why for me, um, I don't, I will never be an unconscious channel unless I'm in a space with like say Lorenda and I'm bringing through like one of my guides case by case. You need to have someone who's the, the critical thinking medium holding that space safe and being yes. discerning. Yes. Like, I, honestly, I was, and I said to her, I feel like this is a retraum, you brought into that sacred space, you brought in a question that was a very traumatizing question you wanted clarity on, and you were re-traumatized by that practitioner who's basically didn't even know what was going on in the session please know your own discernment and building your own intuition with spirit is so much more important than any freaking and angels i'm sorry i love them i work with them but in specific ways and they will kick your ass because they've never been human so they're not going to come in going i'm sorry you had a problem with a such and such and that's why you work with your spirit guides like lorenda said they're closer to earth they have been human or deities even, they are, have more of a bond between um, the earth and spirit. So they're easier, they're able to support you on the journey. 
if you've got to understand, do you know your spirits? Do you know what archangels do? Do you know what other angels do? Do you understand the structure, the hierarchy? Because there is a hierarchy. So don't just go, I'm channeling an angel from where? Who oh, had, where? Who are they? Like, this is why you've got to use, you've got to do your research. You've got to study. You have to understand things like that. Angels are like, I will kick your ass. Angels, if you know anything, you should just look up the Shem angels. I'm working with them right now. They will clear shit out and kick your ass. And they don't really care. And you have to know what you're saying, what you write. So it's you have to do your research. Do your it's research. Not, it's not that they don't care. They just think. It's, it's different. They're like, what's the human? They don't care about the human condition. They're like, let's clear the shit out. This is the universal good. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't know what a boyfriend is. <laughs> I don't care. Don't so care. you're not going to get it. You're not, you know, if you want to bring in, let me talk to you about, like, character. Let me talk to you about the female. Let's talk about Mother Mary. Let's work on Mary Magdalene. This is what you want, you know, and but you don't even want it. Like, when I... Yes, we work with all those. Like I work with Magdalene, I work with Mother Mary, I work with Isis, I work with, you know, Sekhmet and Kalima, and they come in and I connect with them. I, I, then I share and I say to my clients, how does that feel to you? Does that land with you? Because they'll say, I had, a, I had a thing, I felt Mother Mary coming to me, I felt Magdalene coming to me, I felt Isis coming to me, and I was like, so tell me about that. I don't just say Isis knows more than you. <laughs> You know, like that's just, that's cuckoo. You know, that to me is just cuckoo. Yeah. So angels don't play. They will clear shit out. Now they're they're very useful. They're here to serve. But you have to understand, go back in history, look at the occult from even before Christianity. You've got to do your research. Don't come in with a new age fluff because that yeah. shit will, I mean, you can do it, but you're not going to be super grounded and you're really, and anyway, anyway, I'm sorry. I got my soapbox, <laughs> but it just bugs the shit out of me. I'm like, guys. Do your research, do your, I've been there, you know, it's just cause I'm old, I say it, and I've done it a long time and I got my ass kicked plenty of times by not being grounded. Yeah, and you know, I have been, in my early days, I've had my, my share of, oh, I have no idea what that is or why that came through. But I, I have to say I'm lucky now in the place that I have enough yeah. mentors, teachers, experienced people that I can, I can rely on to help me navigate through that stuff. It, it is no joke. It's it no is joke. no joke when you are dealing with spirit realm and, um, and allowing. Yeah. And I love it. Like I, you know, me, I freaking love the deities. I love my goddesses. I love my infernals. I love them so much. However, I know my own human and my own day to day and my own grounding always is most important. And, and they respect that. Yes. Well, so, they do, they do understand that we are still here for a human journey. Oh my God. And while it's all fun to, you know, connect to the other side, we're still here and we do have to stay here earthbound. And that's why they're here to serve us so we can be more effective in our human life, you yeah. know, yeah. and yeah. ground and go out and have a freaking cheeseburger, you know, I do and celebrate Christmas or do whatever the hell you do, you know, like that's that we've lost that we everybody so many people not I don't think this community, but I think there's so much of those people that want to move on to the next plane. They're forgetting that the earth is where it's at. <laughs> you know, right. Earth is and you know, there's a long line to get in here too. Oh, yes. This is this that is so that this is the, this is this is Studio 54 here. This is people such want to be here. a party. Yeah, so the, here's my last story. And this is this is definitely not to in any way ridicule anyone who's coming in who comes into the space, but I feel like like what we're doing is leveling things and people getting people to use their discernment and being grounded and integrating the power of spirit with your daily life in a harmonious way. But the last thing I will tell you is I had a woman who was my age. Okay? came to me and this is only for a lesson so you can understand what is out there when you go when you if you become a practitioner and what you're going to hear um and she <laughs> came to me and we did a reading and it started it was a mediumship reading so i was connecting with her dad in spirit which was great it was really lovely very validating lots of evidence you know and tons of messages and then then we went into something else which was more psychic and so she asked questions which was uh, was the nature of the reading and um she started asking me and i, and, and I would just went to myself 
please don't show, don't be sarcastic when she's talking, just be like neutral poker face. She's like, okay, so here's my one problem. And mind you, her husband is sitting next to her, who's a very gentle, kind soul, probably was a, like a librarian about to retire, stick with me. And she goes, okay, so here's where I wanna know. I have a, I have a part of my soul is on Terra, Atara, another planet. Okay, stick with me. And they, I have on that planet, I have a soulmate. And he actually, stick with me, he has a he is right now embodied here in the 3D. And so my and here's her husband. First of all, if my husband was sitting next to me, you know what he would do if he heard me say that? He'd be like, okay, bitch, I'm out. Like, what the hell? Anyway, stick with me. Okay, so she's saying, hey, we have a connection, but in the 3D, he doesn't recognize it. And so you know, I'm just wondering, what do you think about that? She's asking me this. And what do you think about that? And I'm literally, and you guys know me, I'm kind of salty. So I'll, I wanted to say, what the hell? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I said, here's my thoughts about those kind of energetic yeah, connections. Because I feel like she, what she's saying is it's a real thing mm -hmm. for her. I do feel like it's her experience, right? So I didn't want to invalidate it. But what I wanted to say is, I said, we've all had those very electrical connections with people. This is the whole twin flame bullshit. So, okay, we've all had those, but does it fit into your daily life? And if it doesn't serve you, and if it's not making sense and it's not grounded, you have a perfectly amazing husband sitting right next to you. All your energy is going out, siphoning out. If it were me, I would put up a boundary. I would ask my guides to remove this kind of buzz and move me into this moment. That's what I would do. And it was almost like she thought I was Jesus Christ when I said it. It wasn't anything. I just, she was like, really? And I was like, yeah. And that's why I almost got salty. You I, you wouldn't proud of me. I didn't go in with, like, oh, girl, you're 50 years old. But I just want to say, this is what, this is what's going on right now in the world that people are thinking like this and they're gonna come to you for a reading at some point and they're gonna be saying these crazy fucking things and you're gonna have to be really kind I know. And neutral and not in any way invalidate them, but bring them into this reality. It is. And that that is where that again, as as practitioners and when I when people are like just because you can doesn't mean you should, because it takes experience. It takes so much experience and calm. And you've got to be able to have that thought bubble over here going, What the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> And in your speaking bubble, you're going to go, okay, well, let's talk about that. Speaking bubble. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and your thought bubble's just like, what? Girl, get your feet on the damn ground. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because I, let me, let me tell you guys this. Do I believe we have other lives on other planets? Absolutely. Yes. I absolutely do. Is there other versions of you in other places? Of course there is. Because Here's the problem. Soul, is it exactly. helping you? Is it helping you be grounded? Is it helping you have a better relationship with your partner? Are you manifesting in this life? No, you're not. Well, you you're not. Just... Yeah, and so and by obsessing over whatever whatever your other self is doing, oh you're not handling God. your business here. And your height and your and that's the problem with what when I say so and I've told people told people this before you've I've talked about this before. Three years ago, during the height of the of COVID, I had some very interesting experiences with different um, energies who came to me while I was meditating, yeah. which I do talk about and I that's why I don't want to invalidate people if they have it. It's how yeah. I dealt with it, which I, I think is helpful. And that so, makes you a good practitioner is how you deal with it. Grounded. And I was like, does this have a place in my life? Because it is a reality and it does come. Was I connected with, did I have extraterrestrials visit me? I did. Did I have a out-of-body experience and I was all of a sudden in a ship? I did. Did I have an interaction with uh, Sasquatch because I live in, in Oregon? Yes, I did. Were they valid? Did I get evidence? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. What did I do with it? We don't go on that date very often. In fact, we don't go to that restaurant. We don't go, we don't go on that here. date. And we don't go on that date. Now, my Sasquatch, my Sasquatch, because I live in Oregon, my Sasquatch, I have a huge connection with, and I have evidence. So it's kind of, I talk to my students. I have a, a you know, 
Like I have a podcast, I'm relaunching it in January. I have an episode about that, more to come. Um, I know, I, I, I had it for a year and a half and I just kind of went, I'm too busy. But um, so anyway, it's real, it absolutely happens. But you, if you let it take you off of your, in being in your body, like what Stephanie was saying, um, that is when it's not helpful. Yes. And so you have to be, they, you've got to tell them that I'm open for conversations. I'm always open for conversations when my office hours are open with spirit. I didn't know you're the same, but if it doesn't, if I'm off on some planet in Tara and Tara Tara, and I'm like connecting with some, that's not helpful. It's not helpful. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot yes. invalidate people because people just don't know. And if I went in there salty and invalidated her, it's right. that would also be eliminating the fact that that is a reality. But is it a reality you want to ingest or live in and go to that restaurant right. every day? You should not. It's not healthy for you. It's like yeah. being in a, a relationship with someone you think's like a, a deep soulmate and a twin flame bullshit. Uh -huh. And um, is that helpful? Is it healthy? Is that person in alignment with you? Or are they, you know? And is it helping you on this walk? Oh my God. In, embodying in this, you're, you're also choosing to be, okay, so you're an overachiever. You're in two different places at once. Excellent. So what's your goal here? Is it to engage exactly. there? No, it is not. You, you're you doing that already over there. Oh God. You're right. already doing that. You're not supposed to engage that here. Yeah. So do the work you're supposed to do here with this lovely librarian. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. that's exactly right. And so I kind of feel like, so, and you and I have talked about this, like, I love the occult. I love learning about history. I love all of it. I love it. I love it. I love, I'm learning about all different types of, I'm learning about magic. I'm, well, I'm doing a training this year to like reignite me as a witch in my own practice. Personally, I love all this stuff. This is what I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But do I then also have normal conversations with my friends and family and the people in my community? Do I get yes. to, can, does my neighbor who needs me, can I help, you know, move furniture? This is what I'm saying, like balance. Yeah, and that is something that I do teach. I try to teach students is that it's, it's really cool to walk in the spiritual journey to grow and to learn, but you're also here and you've got to learn these lessons here as the human version of yourself which includes helping others no. on their human journey. You've got, you sign contracts, fulfill them. And if you have one foot in spirit world all the time, you're not living that human thing, you that human life that you committed to and you contracted to. That's right. And yeah. that takes a lot, right? That you takes a lot. The, the mundane shit you got to do to build a business and a spiritual business, we not like all of us know and all y'all know, like the stuff I'm doing right now, if I if I have my head up in Tara, I'm in trouble. I, I have, I am literally in the well, mundane. Yeah, I'd love to be all up in Tara and like, Ooh, I love, like do I love I mean, and you know what? I love when I do Theta State, when I'm I'm doing MDH work, when I'm doing healing work, when I'm doing channeling. I love that. Yeah. However, that does not get my dishes done. It does, nor does it feed my family. Oh. Oh, nor no. does it put gas in my car. Nor does it like get my students' classes taught. Like, you have to find that balance of being human and being a practitioner. You can exactly. live a spiritual life without, and, and that's a whole other conversation. What does it look like to be to walk in a spiritual path? and be a human, yeah. you know, and, and also bridge that gap for those who live in fear. How do you help them? That's it. And make it, yeah, the fear and making it level, making it calm and keeping it simple. It's so true. It's so true. Like the mundane um, is your best friend. It really is your best friend. I mean, like you have to learn to, you open the spiritual space and then you close it. Close it. You open it, you close it, you enter it. They can't, I know, two toddlers, that'll do it. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, you know what? And that goes with any, any it's career, true. I guess, because like I look at tap dancers. Oh my gosh. I've got some tap dance friends who they eat, live, drink, breathe, tap dance 24 seven. And, and then they'll ask me things like, when do I get married and have kids? I'm like, when you're not married to tap dance. Like you have fully so immersed yourself and then now they're 35 years old going, oh, when does my life start? Like, this is your life. Yeah. This yeah. is what you chose. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but you chose that. And if this is the path you're gonna walk, then you don't, there's only so much bandwidth. Yeah. And if you're gonna bring other humans in the world, then you can't, you can't be off, you can't just plop them out and take off again. Like you have to be fully invested to raise a human. Like, so there's that, like you still do things. You can still do yeah. things to be yourself, but that goes back to my two year rule. Anytime someone gives birth, I'm like, I'll see you in two years. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> you have kids, it took me two years to recalibrate after each kid to be, feel oh normal again. But At least. When, when you are human, you're here for the human experience first and foremost. And it's nice to have the validation from a medium or for a spiritual practitioner or someone who can maybe help you navigate the energetic world of what's happening around you. But ultimately, you are a human having a human experience that that if, if people are like, I don't want to come back. I never want to come back again. I'm like, well, first of all, I know I'm always so wow, like, wow. <laughs> I, I get it. But, you know, it's not when we cross over or like, yeah, high five. That was cool. Whoa. Yeah, like, I'm like, what? like, I don't know. I enjoy, I enjoy it. So listen, as we're wrapping this up, yes. would, do you want to do a little collective little card pull for the collective here? Everybody yes. in the space for end of year. Yes. I love I love the human experience. I'm with you, Raven. I'm for it. That's why, again, I, I love like, you know, the work, you know, when you keeping grounded, um, keeping authentic, talking, you know, these things in general. And that's, again, it's, it's enrichment. Okay, let's do a collective. I'm going to defer to you first, sister. And we want to say the other piece I do want to say is that it's so important. I mean, to me personally is that I love working with guides. That's a huge part of my me practice, too. massive. Um, and on a lot of different, so we are definitely not saying that, okay, what we're talking about is, is, is the part, is the connection with your guides or wh what you, you're working with, is it enhancing your life? This oh, life? Yes. It That's should not be, it, the spir your spiritual journey should not be unplugging you from life. Yes. It should, be, it should be enhancing and enriching your, her earth walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. I love it. So yeah. anyway, we'll do, I'm going to defer to you today, friend, to do, right. pull your cards and then I'll, I'm going to, I'll do the same. It's our overall vibe here. We're asking spirit. End of year, vibe. friend. End of year. Oh, wow. I'm manifesting. I'm manifesting a tour out in Oregon. You're coming. And, and look, we're going to go to, gonna go to wine country. Oh my God. No. We're gonna Which, go to the wine country, spend the night. We'll do a we'll do an overnight in the wine country in Oregon. Let's just see how this card is literally a wine. Like, I know, and we can do spa. Vineyards. We'll do spa and wine. Okay, so let's see what I got going on here. Happening. Sorry, you manifested it. Yeah. All right. So, yep. As we're talking, that Ten of Pentacles energy comes up, but it's a vineyard. I love that. And so we're manifesting. Oh my God, that's what I need to do. <gasps> I'm doing a spirits and spirits tour and I'm doing all my live mediumship at Vineyards. Yes, I love that. That's what you should do. Cause you know, there's one everywhere, even if it's a smaller version. And in fact, there is a little one here in Portland up the street from me, literally dude. It's it, there's, you get, we have our whole wine country in Portland. I mean, sorry, in, in Oregon, which is like Newburgh, McMinnville, yada, yada. Yeah. But there's also a little one up the street. So anyway. I was thinking wine the other day. I have, a, I, have, I have like six bottles of wine from Willamette. Oh, um, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I know. Okay, so I got the four of cups with that. Let me, and then my ace of swords, which I love the vibration of the three of these together. So if we're talking about manifesting and setting intentions, this is what we're doing. We're manifesting the Ten of Pentacles, which is ultimate success, whether that is financial. It's, when I see Pentacles, I think of what things we place value on. So when you're manifesting, you're not manifesting the money, you're manifesting a happy family, you're manifesting safety, your security, and however spirit brings that to you is how it comes to you. And when you're sitting back with that Four of Cups is asking for that sign. What, how, asking for that discernment, asking for what's coming to you that you should be filling your cup with. And then there's an ace of swords. Like once you've gathered all that information, that ace of swords comes in and says, all right, I'm going to take the strength that I've, I've earned, that I've, the experiences I've had, 
and and I'm going to let the cut the baggage loose. We're gonna cut the baggage loose, and I'm gonna go forward in a very discerning manner. And and I'm gonna ask what my spirit guides think, and I'm gonna live my bliss. I'm gonna live my best life. Oh, oh. What cards are those? Those ones you're holding? These, Is that Louise uh, Hay? These are James Von Prague ta uh, spirit guide ones, I believe. Oh. Spirit guide messages. So ultimately, if you're you're gonna live your bliss, you're gonna live happily because you're manifesting what's best for your highest good. You're not manifesting your fears. And I, you know what, even in, even in my classes, when I say well, teaching people how to read, don't say what you don't know. Don't yeah. say what you don't want. Don't say, you know, in motorcycle school, look where you're going. Don't look. Where Brenda you're going. drives a motorcycle, y'all. Yeah. Talk about earth energy. But if you, but if you, if you, look at the headlights and thinking oh i don't want to run into those that car head on if you're looking at it that's where the bike is going to go so you've got to think of where do you want to go where do you want to end up where do you want to be and once you get there how do you want to feel there <laughs> yep um vroom vroom and 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 how do you do that you use that discernment you use the discernment and you set you set your goals you live in your and you live in your bliss so that's how you're setting goals oh my gosh what, like what a perfect reading with that i just tell you something right now so let's just verify you pulled three cards beside your oracle right yes three. just three not ten three i just pulled two out of the same three that you just pulled i pulled the ten of pentacles what? ten of pentacles yeah this deck which is all about that, like you said, what do you want to manifest? How do you want it to feel? What's your vision? What's Legacy is a big word that adds weight to it, which I know they associate with this, but it's really all about what is your embodied version of your what you desire? What does it feel like? What, do, what are the components? And, mm -hmm. and with ease, because it's going to mature and develop. And then... We want to, so the moon card was the, the one variable in this picture. So this is the moon card in this one. Sorry, it's kind of shiny. Um, and what, what the moon tells us, this is obviously a very feminine energy based card um, and being in touch with, but it's also not, not quite apparent to you what it is because it's a little bit in the shadow. So you want to then sit with yourself and say, what do I desire? What does it feel like to be in the space that I want to manifest and create? What is the essence of that? And how do we get to that clarity? Shut up with the Ace of Swords. What? Just you have, I know, crazy, right? So the Ace of Swords in this version I love because you have the key of unlocking what is that like? Open the door. Don't limit yourself to what it could be like, but being really cutting through and the swords are all about cutting through what is not evident and not helpful and being and thinking it through and communicating it. And then the sh interior of this shell in particular is the steps involved and the layers. And that's an internal thing. What does that feel like to me? Now, here's my last card. Because I am working with the goddess Isis and have done so for a while, I pulled one of her cards because she's coming into my practice again. She's already done so much for me. And I will tell you what it says. I'll read you the first paragraph. This is called Talismans of Potency, Charging Sacred Objects of Power. So one of the things that we all have, if we have them, are items that help to ground us in our practices, right? We use things like talismans, we use crystals, we use candles, we use whatever floats your boat -o. You could literally like for you, for my deities, I have a sacred horse that my mom gave me from China. We have things that help ground our energy. So I'm gonna read you what this says. So just give me a moment. Okay, let's find her. What does Mother Isis have to say? Here's the paragraph I'll read for you. Sacred tools <coughs> can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and matter. This is all what we're talking about in the chills. And learning to bring physical matter 
more deeply into light and love. And this is what it's in your life. Blending what you desire in spirit into the physical plane. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world. As a part of your spiritual practice, your love for the physical world of matter is a gift to the earth too. I'm done. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> And that's why you want to work with Mother Isis. Wow. Just saying. Can I show you something really quick? Because I, you may have seen this or not. Let me show you what just came from Egypt. Just, a okay. what? just, just, just think this thing just came from Egypt. Yes, this just came from Egypt. And anyway, so it's just a timing. That's a whole nother rabbit hole story. My students have heard about it. I, I, I'll tell you at some other point. So. <laughs> Long story short, like if some of you guys know this, some of you don't. So I, I am a, um, a Magdalene Rose priestess. That's such another conversation. That's more my personal thing. I don't really teach on it or do any of that, but it's my own practice. And in that walk of getting that training and going through that initiation with my mentor and my, my, my Magdalene Rose priestess sisters, I began working with mother Isis. Okay. And, temp and very, very healing and transformational. She helped me in a lot of physical ways and a lot of embodiment ways. So she's very sacred to me. Um, but you know, some got some guides come in and out of your practice when right. you, except for your major spirit guides, this is just a thing right. and it's okay. So one of my priestess sisters who uh, I is a part of my practice, um, she's gone to Egypt twice in the last year. And in that, I started feeling Isis come around me again for reasons. And she's gonna be a part of my workshop in the Heal Your Money story, I'll just give you that. Because if you want to work with her, it's just something to think about. She's amazing for embodiment yeah. in your body, not out of your body, in your body. Anyway, so my friend said to me, I have some items. They are literally carrying the vibration of being in Isis's temple in Egypt. I'm just going to give you the chills. So talk about a sacred item. Here is my from Egypt. And this is like the wings of her. She's She is all the things. She is she covers you like a blanket like a mother she asks you to step into your physical life she helps you do a deep transformation she is a woman of a thousand faces incredible and then the final thing so she's a you know is this is a special uh a, it's a oil that was made in egypt that literally i'm not joking when i say this because you know me we're keeping it grounded here when i open the smell of this it, I literally feel like a transformation in my energy because of it's imbued with this. I can't describe it. And I swear, I, I have to somehow get you to smell it. I'll just come um, out there because we're going to go to wine country and I'm going to do readings. You're so. going to do. So anyway, beautiful. So that's for Mother Isis. So beautiful. That's beautiful. Have you seen the mini series Queen Cleopatra? No, I need to. Let me know. That oil is from Egypt. <laughs> So I don't know. I will say uh, my friend might start having something where she literally gave she sent me this. Um, she's one of my priestess sisters. So and you can feel the vibration of what is in it. You know, like that's not nonsensory. That is absolute. Like I opened it and I was like, whoa, never had that happen before. Never. That's I've opened I have a lot of oils. I have a lot of oils. I have oils for different deities. I have different things. This is somehow imbued with there's some frequency. And I was like, wow. And there I have a lot of evidence from other practitioners coming to me who had no idea I worked with ISIS. And all of a sudden I say, I, they feel ISIS around me. And this I'm getting from ISIS. I was like, oh, Lord. I mean, oh, ISIS. Oh, ISIS. <laughs> anyway, 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 this was so much fun. I know. We have to do this again. Amazing I conversation. I think it'd be fun sometime to do, because you can hold space or... I can also whatever. It'd be cool to do like a channeling demonstration. I think we should. I think we should. I think we should absolutely do that. We can maybe we should do that not on live on TikTok. Should we do that? <laughs> we could. We always could. We could just do an open event. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We could do it on TikTok. I guess. Let's talk about it. Let's manifest it. Well, my office. Thank you all so much for being here with us and all your contributions and keeping this space safe and um, encouraging. And, you know, 
She's, she's like, do it on both. So I have Reggie. Okay, awesome. Good. This was wonderful. Lorenda, I had such a good time. Oh, no, no, no. Such a good time with you. Of course I did. Of course. Um, we, we could totally. I wish you were my neighbor. We'd just hang I out. Know, all time. We would, we would, we would talk about never. We'd never get any work done. I'd be over at your house going, oh my God, you know what happened then? Five hours later, like, what happened to the time? I was over here and then now all of a sudden. <laughs> It's so true. what do you have on your docket for the rest of your day, Lorenda? What do you doing? Um, I've got some mentoring that I got to do. And I really need to get my nails done. Girl, get your nails done. done. What color are you doing? Well, I got my toes done, but she took an hour and a half to do my toes last week. And I'm like, um, but, and I had to leave because I, I had to get to a meeting. So it was like the long, I mean, I appreciated it and all, but it was an hour and a half on my feet to get my toes painted. So I, uh, I got to get my nails done. It's just a fun Christmassy red. And then I've got I've got some mentees this evening, and then I got my class. Awesome. My, my spiritual development circle, which I have a couple spots left open. She's got a couple spots open, y'all. Yeah, it's only twenty five dollars, and it's for all levels. You don't even have to have any experience. We take the time to connect to your guides right away, and then um, we it's a safe space. I don't break people off into rooms. I don't do that. And this is like that we just we read for each other we connect with each other but it's usually through a fun game um I don't, i'm not really sure what spirits got on the docket tonight i gotta tune in and see like i'm like oh this got I hope this is good because nothing has come to me i'm turning um, up I'm, i better be good but i i trust spirit so um and so i've got this <clears throat> that tonight and then we got the holidays i host so I got to start really thinking about that and finishing some shopping and stuff. So I've got, that's it. I'm just getting my mentees and my, my, my class tonight. And then how about you? What do you got going on? I love it. Well, actually speaking of the mundane, I'm going, um, so I have, I have two children. Um, and, uh, my son and I are going to finish our, some Christmas shopping actually for who my husband. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I mean, you know, like the few things who the man is hard to buy for, you know how it is. I know I don't know what to get my husband other than like jelly beans and oh my god you know yeah so that's a whole nother thing yes yeah, so we're gonna do that and then and then I have my class at four o'clock with my sacred seer girls and tonight just a little notion <laughs> that's what I will say you know one of the things like Lorenda does like we're mamas right we're homeroom teachers so my students in my sacred seer program they've been training with me it'll be coming up a year in February and then they're gonna we're going to be moving into another year of training or two. Maybe we'll see uh, how they go. But anyway, tonight they get their holiday, their Yule presents for me, and they're going to open them for in front of me. They don't know what they got. <coughs> and if it's I'm not going to tell you what you got until we open. So they're going to, I spoil them, of course. of course. They get surprises all the time, like you do, you know. I know. And so I'm excited. I'm sorry to party for all my, um, all my local people having a party in january for all my local people to get together oh, you know, that you're mentoring that are local you know i love that I know. can i come i don't have to do anything i can yeah. serve i can just be Absolutely. hanging any, out any guesses where it's going to be okay the wine the wine bar the wine bowl. <laughs> Thank you. why do you have to do shit that i would like and i can't just run you over could. That's not you, could. you could you could come yeah, I could just take a little little train to indiana a little Come on. Sounds, sounds wonderful. But I want all you guys to take good care of yourself. Remember, if you are starting to move from doing Christian based holidays into more of the wheel of the year, remember we have Yule that's happening right now and we have the winter solstice. Pardon me. So think about it. Think, yeah, it feel into the earth. Get your connection with the earth. Mother Earth is here for you. I love you, Rolanda. I love you too. All right. Okay, so I'll probably talk to you later in an hour. I'll text you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because I'm sure there's going to be more things that I think of that we we're going to have another conversation. We could do this like once a month or something. I don't know. Oh, no. I love there's it. There's so many conversations, right? It's just good to like, mm -hmm. I think it's great to have conversations and hear people's questions. So transitioning. We love it. Yay. All right. Lots of love to everybody. Thank you guys for being here. It was super Thank fun. You. Appreciate and, you all. Um, Hope you all learned something. Give a thumbs up if you learned something. And if anything, always trust yourself above anything anyone ever tells you. I always tell my students that. I might be helping you, but always trust yourself first. <laughs> and whatever vibrates with you, like yeah. maybe all this deity stuff just wasn't your gig, you know, and that's okay. not into it at all. 100%. Okay. I remember that time I wasn't. 
yeah, you weren't. And well, I never like to push well, it on people. That's my thing is like, some people are like, that's not my jam. Like Raven, you know, he's, he's in the community. I'm in a community with Abella, one of my mentors. And we, I mean, we're all about the deities. We love them, but you know, that's us that not everybody is even every, some I'm training now with the witch, this year long training and she's an academic. She's a teacher herself. And she's like, I don't work with any deities. I work with the elemental energies of the planets. And I was like, awesome, let's go. Let's learn it's something. It's important. Like, they're, it doesn't matter. It's always whatever, balance. however you express yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. And understanding just the energy. Energy exactly. is energy is energy. Exactly. Energy. Exactly. So however we label is how we label it. You totally. know? Yeah. Some people don't even have any concern about it. They barely even know their spirit guides. And I'm not judging them. No. Do you? And that is okay. Yeah, no big deal. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, guys. Love you. Love you, Lorinda. Thank you for being with me. I love you so much. Bye, everybody. Take care. Ciao. Ha <laughs> ha.